Welcome Move. to an amusing tale of an unfortunate office worker, trapped in a game as a non-combatant character, whose only saving grace is a massive inventory filled with hundreds of world-class items. This is the story of a man who must rely on his wits to survive in a brutal game world, where a brand new update has just been released, introducing thousands of unknown elements and a terrifying plot to wipe out humanity. Let's patiently follow this fascinating journey. Meet Kim Jiwoo, a man with no assets, no girlfriend, who is gleefully reading the latest update of his favorite game, Over the Fantasy, while chuckling at his phone. Kim Jiwoo is a humble office worker who spends his free time engrossed in his phone, learning about the game. His meager income can't support a girlfriend, so gaming is his only passion that helps him cope with his stagnant life. Fast forward to 2039, a time when technology has advanced tremendously. Everyone owns a pair of virtual reality glasses for gaming, fully immersing themselves as characters in an incredibly realistic 3D space. Of course, this isn't the only 3D game on the market, but its authenticity has made it the center of attention, increasing its difficulty level. Pay-to-win players won't easily overpower others, as the game's monetization mechanism only allows for an initial payment. After that, you need to hone your skills to become stronger. After work, Juwu gently closes the door, eagerly anticipating this moment. He tosses his bag aside, ready to log into the game and enjoy. He rushes to grab his gaming device, exclaiming, Oh my, I thought I'd die waiting to finish work and get home. Today, after three years of release, the game will have a major update. The update will take place at midnight, but it's only 7 p.m. now. Juwu values perfection, so he always prepares thoroughly. He plans to log into the game early and prepare a few things. Sitting in his chair, he presses the button, puts on his glasses, and a virtual screen and keyboard appear before him. The screen displays a successful login message, and a plethora of characters appear before Juwu. If someone owns three max-level characters in the game, society labels them as a life-wasting gamer. But for a guy like him, who owns seven max-level characters, it's hard to find a fitting label. This time, Juwu is set to log into a new character named Dio, a novice at level 10 with no class yet assigned. He decisively commands the system to select this character, who bears a striking resemblance to himself. For reasons well known to all, we create additional characters to exploit our item storage, and Juwu is no exception. As the character opens his eyes, Juwu's consciousness, like a faint beam of light, merges with this new avatar. According to Juwu's knowledge, a new character class is being introduced this time, so he plans to enter the game, reorganize his inventory, discerning what to use for growth, what needs to be stored, and intends to use this character to register for the new class and see how it goes. Upon opening his inventory, Juwu breaks into a sweat, confronted with hundreds of items in disarray, the sorting of which would undoubtedly consume a considerable amount of time. This place is an old town, the location of Juwu's storage. Wiping the sweat from his brow, he heads to his storage area, where an elderly NPC named Tony stands guard. Due to the chaotic state of his inventory, Juwu has to open a large storage space for easier organization. The elderly NPC kindly says, All right, wait a moment, it costs one silver coin. As the level increases, so does the storage fee, hence players keep their storage characters at level 10. He pulls out a dagger, something he will keep here until it can be transferred to another character. It appears to be a fine blade. There are many other items, utterly worthless, which should have been discarded, but for some reason, Juwu still keeps them here. Suddenly, the system announced that a new update would be launched in 15 minutes, urging players to quickly find a safe place and log out of the game. It turned out that the time Juwu spent organizing his inventory had unknowingly passed by several hours. Scratching his cheek, Juwu decided to ignore this, knowing that he would be automatically logged out when the system update began. The city had a level cap of 100, so as long as he stayed within its boundaries, Juwu would always be safe, free from the fear of being killed and robbed. He continued to diligently tidy up his inventory, but for some reason, he felt a bit uneasy. He needed to hurry up a bit. The system would update in another five minutes. Then, the moment of the update arrived. A red screen appeared, displaying an access denial error, and the system's voice urging players to log out kept echoing. Bang! The notification screen shattered, 
and then a black notification board appeared. You cannot send messages. But Ju Wu didn't pay any attention to it. He was just focused on finishing his inventory. Few finally done, gloves were arranged in the glove section, clothes were neatly organized, he stretched his shoulders, today's work was done. But something strange happened, there was no logout, he was still standing here, in this game space. Damn, scared the hell out of him. Something was wrong. Ju Wu frantically looked around, there were no more notifications, no automatic logout, what the hell was going on, or was the update postponed? Then he would have to log out manually. Opening the control panel, Ju Wu looked for the logout button but it was gone. Oh damn, was this a nightmare? At the same time, he also realized that his senses were completely realistic. No matter how much investment this game had, it could not achieve this level of realism. He raised his two hands to count all ten fingers, even had a faint blue aura. Damn it, what should he do now? But with his years of gaming experience, Ju Wu immediately thought of the spatial rift which was where many players gathered together. He bit his lip and ran like the wind through the streets, hoping to meet other users there, to find out what was happening. Damn it, where's the rift? There was clearly a portal leading into the spatial crack here, but now it's gone. A child bumped into him, causing him to wince in pain. The sensation was too real. A question arose in Joe's mind, is this still a game? Thinking about this, his sweat poured out like rain but his body was cold as ice. He comforted himself. This must be just a temporary game glitch. Those damn programmers. Once he gets out of this game, he's definitely going to sue them. Three days later, he was still here, his body emaciated. His eyes lost their sharpness. Looking like a homeless man, he wandered the streets and markets hoping to find an exit. But in the end, he had to accept that this world is the only reality and the most serious problem is that he in this world is just a level 10 character with no profession. In the training area of the city's army, the team leader was instructing the new recruits. Ju Wu stood to one side with his arms crossed, watching stealthily. These three days, Ju Wu had wandered all over the city, not finding any clues, finally accepting the truth, a bunch of powerful characters, seven max level characters, but somehow got stuck in the game with the weakest character. It's just too unlucky. But at least, this character has enough money to spend without worry. A soldier noticed Ju Wu's strange reaction. The soldier approached and asked if he had any business here. Looking suspicious. Ju Wu just answered casually, I'm just watching. But the soldier enthusiastically invited Ju Wu, come join us. But Ju Wu stiffly waved his hand quickly to dodge. But suddenly remembering something, he asked the soldier, but what's the reason for you guys to organize such mass training? The soldier stroked his chin thoughtfully and said, Because of those waves. These monster waves are a recurring event. Avera is a village managed by NPCs, yet it is constantly under attack from these waves. If players join the NPCs in battle, they can gain experience more easily than fighting alone. The developers designed this feature as a way to nurture players. However, this village has a level cap of 100 and Ju Wu is only a level 10 character, meaning that the arrival of the monster wave is a disaster for him. Dio pondered for a long time, his eyes dimmed with regret. Dio is the name of this character. Let's call him Dio for simplicity. If he were to die here, it would mean certain death on earth as well. All he needs to do now is strive to survive. He opened the function panel to study a bit, then returned to the inventory. Opening the inventory, there were two job change scrolls for the assassin and martial arts master professions, but he didn't meet the requirements to change jobs because Dio's stats had been upgraded haphazardly. The assassin job required each stat to be 15, but Dio had upgraded his strength straight to 50. It was hopeless. Dio felt like his life was a real mess. But suddenly, he saw a purple scroll appear in the inventory. This shimmering purple was strange. He had never seen it before. Perhaps it was a sign of a new profession in this update. Job change scroll, talent breakthrough character class, unknown. In phase two, this job change scroll can be used at the altar of the forgotten temple. Minimum requirements to use character class under phase one. Reputation requirement, 500. In short, Dio couldn't use this job change scroll right now. But Dio suddenly remembered something. It seemed there was still a chance to use this scroll. This game was inherently realistic. Players were given very little information for quests, 
They often had to wander around maps to find hidden areas, which made many impatient players curse the publisher like a dog. But Dio felt that this was the fun part. Dio held the scroll tightly in his hand, his face tense as hell, as if he was holding his own life. Surely this forgotten temple was a hidden area. Looking carefully at the conditions on the scroll, Dio thought he could do it. His face was as happy as a flower. He gripped the scroll tightly, then took off like a shot, not forgetting to say goodbye to old man Tony. Tony waved to him and said, Come back soon. Dio ventured to a place, the headquarters of the mercenary guild in the village of Avera. Donning a hooded cloak, he stepped inside, where the spacious lounge was bustling with chattering mercenaries. As he entered, Dio trembled, nearly wetting his pants. This timid rabbit was only level 10, while the room was filled with level 100 experts. Gathering all his courage, Dio approached the receptionist, but next to him was a sharp-nosed, grim-faced man who was scrutinizing him. The man pointed at Dio and said, Excuse me, sir, could you please queue up? This brat really didn't know his place. He began to inspect Dio's outfit, a peasant's shirt, a pair of cheap pants, and worn-out shoes. It seemed this kid had nothing impressive about him, looking utterly destitute. The man started to mock, how does such a ragged person appear in a guild? Dio coolly tossed a gold coin and said, let me meet the guild leader. What's this, damn it, an A-rank honor medal? A medal that confirms the status of a person A.S., an advanced rank mercenary, an expert. The shiny coin clinked on the table, gleaming brightly. The receptionist girl was so surprised that she stuttered T. This. The two hunters also looked shocked. This was an A-rank hunter's medal, something extremely noble and rare. This was exactly the effect Dio wanted to see from these people. Remember, only 0.1% of hunters own it. Of course, Dio had taken it out from his inventory. Such a trivial thing. His plan was as follows. First, he would use this A-rank medal to fabricate a reputation for himself, then don a hooded item to conceal his stats and identity, easily deceiving everyone into believing he was a master among masters. Hee <laughs> hee, and there's this too. Dio placed his hand on his chest, a high-grade medal, the Medal of Valor awarded to the Empire's heroes, supremely noble. Dio wore it on his chest as a testament to his grand origins. See, isn't it beautiful? If he were to reveal this in public, it would certainly attract unwanted attention and he could be in danger, as this medal is like a royal passport, allowing him to travel anywhere and be welcomed as a hero. The people around him immediately distanced themselves a bit from Dio as if they had discovered that he was a top-tier expert in the kingdom, capable of killing with just a thought. Dio arrogantly asked, Well, am I qualified to meet the guild master yet? Despite saying this, sweat was still pouring from Dio, like a kid holding a thick wad of 100 US dollars bills going to buy toys. The shop owner instead of selling goods would call the police. Dio was now worried. Would this woman and those old men call someone to appraise these items? That would be a big trouble. But then a firm and old voice rang out. Oh, our special guest is here. He introduced himself politely. I am a guild manager of this village. My name is Cotton. This man, although over 60 years old, had a robust body. Beneath his thin shirt were the bulging muscles of a dinosaur. He cast his eyes towards Dio. Can we go upstairs to discuss the details? Dio's eyes lit up but he didn't forget to be vigilant. Absolutely not to reveal any loopholes. Dio still crossed his arms, very strong, and said, I, I didn't say I wanted to meet the guild master, did I? The manager Cotton just humbly bowed his head and apologized sincerely. I'm truly sorry, our guild master has been absent recently. Then he bowed deeper. I hope that I can replace the guild master to listen to your request. What else could it be? In the face of such sincerity, Dio readily agreed, and then the two of them went up to the loft to find a private place. Dio's first step had been successful. He could only hope for everything to go smoothly. Next would be the negotiation round. Just now, he was still reverent towards Dio. But as soon as they started doing business, Cotton's face immediately became serious. So you want a mission to the Forgotten Temple? Dio confidently replied, Yes, I don't have any additional conditions. Cotton gently stroked his beard in thought. It just so happened that there was a guild mission being prepared which was to go to the Forgotten Temple. But how on earth would an A-rank hunter do this mission? Cotton also straightforwardly replied immediately. 
We have a mission to the Forgotten Temple, but there are already enough registered members. Oh my god, how lucky. The ancestors have blessed Dio. He laughed happily and immediately accepted, great, I'll take it. But seeing the reluctant face of old man Cotton, Dio added, I don't need any reward or remuneration. Just a pleasant and comfortable trip is enough. Cotton looked at Dio with a slightly awkward face and asked, So you want to join this trip and want to be treated like a protected person? Dio understood, Of course not. I won't stand by if anyone is in danger. Cotton once again carefully considered, In the end this young man didn't need money or rewards. Moreover having extra combat power also meant more safety. Then Cotton broke into a satisfied smile and said, All right, then we will issue this mission to you. Hearing this, Dio was overjoyed. Finally it was done. Then, following Cotton's suggestion, Dio signed the contract, and he would go to inform the team members about this change. Tomorrow morning they will wait for Dio at the north gate of the city. After that, Dio left. He needed to prepare a bit. Especially he had to think of all ways to hide his identity. But he didn't know. Cotton behind him was grinding his teeth. Never in his life had he ever had to yield to anyone like this. The next morning, three hunters were ready and waiting at the northern city gate. A burly hunter asked, Hey brother, what's an A-rank hunter doing back in this rural area? But the blue-haired one, seeing Dio approaching, warned him, After all, he's an A-rank, better not to offend. Raymond extended his hand to Dio and introduced himself. Are you the rumored A-rank hunter? I'm Raymond. Dio casually said a random name, Monty to introduce himself. They shook hands, wishing each other a pleasant cooperation. Dio didn't expect that there would only be four guards on this trip, including him. Perhaps because of the participation of a high-ranking hunter like him, the guild had reduced manpower? Damn that old man Cotton, does he know how weak I am? Damn, Dio felt like a fool for negotiating with that old man without any conditions. Raymond spoke up, shall we continue to wait for the mission leader? Just then, the sound of hurried. Light footsteps rang out, and a beautiful young girl in a blue cloak and extremely short skirt appeared. She had the innocent beauty of a country girl. The girl hastily said, Please wait for me. Are you the ones escorting me to the Forgotten Temple? Then she panted, apologizing for being late. I will lead the mission to the Forgotten Temple. I am Clara, the priestess of the Luna Temple. Then everyone introduced themselves, while Dio silently observed, scrutinizing the girl from head to toe. Hmm. This girl's clothes are messy. Something must have happened for her to rush here. But virgins often have a super-sensitive sixth sense. Catching Dio's gaze, the girl stared at him intently. Dio involuntarily caught in the act became awkward. Clara continued to stare at Dio, hoping that she wasn't thinking something was wrong, or maybe because A-rank hunters are rare. She was just curious and looking. Raymond, seeing that everyone was present, shouted, Oh, it's time. Let's go this way. They set off on a day when the sun was blazing overhead, its powerful rays piercing everything in sight. The system screen informed Dio that he was entering an area with monsters stronger than him. A peaceful day had passed, and as long as he maintained his cool demeanor, everything would be fine. The group set up a campfire. Raymond pulled out a map and began to calculate the next camping spot. The hunter agreed. It was clearly a detour, but it would be safer, and the safer, the better. Raymond also agreed with this opinion. Only Dio immediately objected, still maintaining his dangerous cool demeanor. Dio stood alone with his arms crossed at the base of a tree and said, No, we should take a shortcut. Ignoring the expressions of everyone, Dio continued to say, If we go to campsite number three, there is a secret cave there, which can lead straight to the forgotten temple. Hearing this, Raymond immediately felt the tickle in his ear. He put on an elder's voice and said, Oh, Mr. Rank A, we know the terrain here better than you, and moreover, campsite number three is not very safe. But Dio was not willing to lose. He immediately retorted, Hey guys, I can find the way even with my eyes closed. Moreover, this secret path will cut through Dundal Forest. It's extremely fast. Hearing the name of the forest, Raymond screamed in fear, Hey, do you know how dangerous that forest is? There are tons of powerful monsters there. Knowing this, but Dio had no choice, the longer the road, the more time it would take, he was at risk of being discovered. Damn it, if they knew this guy was only level 10, he would definitely die a horrible death and be robbed of everything. Dio crossed his arms and thought, his heart was worried as hell, 
But at this moment Dio needed to be more confident, he had to be really tough. Thinking so, Dio confidently said out loud, Listen, I have decided to go to campsite number three. Hearing this, the whole team was apprehensive. They were weak unlike the rank A hunter. Dio continued his passionate speech. We should consider the priestess's stamina. Wouldn't a shorter route be better? Besides, I joined this mission to leisurely enjoy the company of you all. Dio clenched his fist, speaking with determination. My time is extremely precious. After his speech, Dio felt he was a bit over the top, understanding the confusion in the hearts of the others. Dio turned to the priestess and asked, And Clara, what do you think? Clara looked surprised, her mind a bit dazed, unsure if it was because Dio was flirting with her. The shy girl replied, For me, I... I also want to go faster, so we can follow Monty. Thus, the return journey would be led by Raymond. But now everyone would follow Monty. Raymond and his team had no choice but to comply. After all, the mission leader had agreed. But Raymond still grumbled. All right. We'll do it that way. But if danger arises, I hope you, Mr. Rank A, can handle it. Dio's face beamed as he said, Don't worry. Pulling the esteemed priestess to his side was not bad at all. Afterwards, everyone took the opportunity to sleep to regain their strength for the journey in the morning. The sun was high in the sky. Dio stretched. Damn. This life was too real. Waking up with aching muscles. If it was just a game, one sleep would be enough. The next day the stamina bar would be full. Due to being on guard all the time. Dio's sleep last night wasn't good. Feeling like his lifespan had dropped a bit. A while later, they arrived at the third campsite. Raymond turned to ask Dio. Hey, Mr. Rank A, is there really a cave here? Yes, but this area might have a pack of wolves, so be careful. But Raymond left the group and went into a bush. Dio immediately spoke up. Hey, where are you going? I've warned you. It turned out the guy needed to pee, wanted to relieve himself. Raymond was not happy, zipping up his pants while turning to argue. Can I even have the right to pee? Dio understood immediately. This petty guy was still holding a grudge about being led by the nose yesterday. No problem, Dio would take this opportunity to teach these hunters a lesson. He said to Clara, Hey, priestess, come over here and rest for a while. Everyone sought a cool place to rest, taking the opportunity to check their position on the map. Suddenly, a loud scream rang out. It was Raymond. The system screen announced, Party member, Raymond, has been attacked by a wolf and is bleeding. Raymond, with his legs around his neck, screamed and ran in panic. A wolf as big as a cow, ran on two legs with sharp claws, continuously swiping at his back. Clara, frightened, clutched her magic wand tightly, while Dio sported a cunning smile. See, I told you so. A swordsman in the group quickly turned back to look at Dio reproachfully and shouted, Hey, Mr. Rank A, don't just stand there, okay? But how could Dio easily help? Moreover, this level 10 needed to show off a bit to everyone. He smirked. I clearly warned him but he didn't listen. He has to solve the problems he created himself. Hearing this, the other two could only roll their eyes in frustration. Damn it, why is there such a cheeky mercenary? Dio crossed his arms, turned to Clara and instructed her to stay close to him. Now, the two of them would watch how those hunters performed. Raymond fell to the ground, but luckily, two enthusiastic teammates rushed to his aid immediately. If not, his life would have been hard to save but they were experienced warriors. The shield bearer raised his shield to block a swipe from the mad wolf, and the other immediately slashed at the wolf's arm. Then both of them attacked together, looking very professional and coordinated. Seeing this, Dio judged that these two must also be around level 100, and therefore, the wolf was immediately overwhelmed. How could a wolf fight against two rank D level 100 hunters? Dio continued to observe. On the other side, Raymond was still being carefully attended to by another wolf. This one was being beaten up by two hunters and was about to be finished off. Unfortunately, according to Dio's knowledge and experience, this injured wolf was about to meet the conditions to go berserk. The opportunity to show off had arrived. Dio took out a forage iron mace that looked quite rustic, slowly advanced, and struck at the right moment. He had to let them know that the title of a rank A hunter was not in vain. Dio, with the iron mace on his shoulder, walked away arrogantly. Clara, let's go help them a bit. Clara could only timidly agree. A mercenary warrior could fend off one or two werewolves, but they couldn't handle them smoothly without getting injured, 
if they didn't have the knowledge and skills of these werewolves. Dio, on the other hand, knew very well. He stepped up next to the sweaty guy and said, Step aside. The guy seemed reluctant, but he was already drenched in sweat, just glared at Dio, while Raymond, with a disgruntled face, said, You've been sitting and watching since earlier. Only now you're willing to lend a hand? I guess not all A-ranks are like that, huh? Funny, take a look at yourself. But just then, the werewolf began to rage, its eyes flaring up with a terrifyingly murderous glow. The werewolf's body began to swell, all its muscles bulged, and it exuded a terrifying aura of power. Seeing this, Raymond almost wet his pants. What the hell is this? A second later, the shield of the other guy was shattered by the mad wolf. Too dangerous. Retreat quickly. Then he jumped back as fast as a rabbit. Only Dio was left. He swung his iron mace up. Thump. It hit the head of the ferocious wolf. Dio coldly ordered. The werewolf took a hit from Dio. Its body twitched. It seemed to have been stunned. Then it fell heavily to the ground. In the eyes of the hunters at this moment, it seemed as if they had seen Dio take down the ferocious werewolf with a single blow. But in reality, it was just a trick of Dio's. Werewolves would enter a bloodthirsty berserk state before they die, extremely ferocious and powerful. In this state, they would increase all their physical stats and have a very good ability to remove injuries and damage. At this time, a herb called purification herb must be used, applied to the weapon and just bring this scent close to the beast. The berserk state would be immediately neutralized. See, this is the ability of a knowledgeable gamer. Dio continued to order everyone to retreat. He knew very well that this beast would attack from left to right, so he would pretend to have an extraordinary dodging ability. Dodge left, dodge right, then retreat. See? I'm not like you guys, am I? With one hand, Dio slammed the beast into a tree trunk. Actually, it had charged itself into it. Then, its head started to spin with stars, a state of dizziness, lasting about five seconds. This was Dio's shining moment. Bang! Bang! Two powerful thuds echoed. Dio's iron mace hit the beast before it could react. He killed it outright. Dio arrogantly stepped on the wolf, as if he had just slaughtered a small chicken. No one knew that after the wolf's rage state ended. It would die from a burst blood vessel. Dio just cleverly turned it into a spectacular performance. Not only that, during the fight, Dio couldn't touch a single hair of the wolf due to the huge level difference. Dio put his hand in his pocket, turned around cheerfully and said to Clara, Thank you, priestess. We all owe you this favor. But Clara just smiled and said, It's nothing. It's also the responsibility of a priestess like me. What about you? Raymond Dio asked. Then Dio put his hand on his chest, with a sincere face said, It's all my fault, because I chose this dangerous path. Hearing this, Raymond's resentment also subsided. He rubbed his head awkwardly and said, I'm fine. I also have a fault in this. The other two teammates also felt that they were a bit too early to judge others, although a bit rude, but the rank A is still a person with rich experience, and the character is just a bit. It's okay. Dio smirked, successfully winning the respect and trust of these people. When night came, a campfire was lit again. Everyone found the secret cave that Dio had mentioned. At this time Raymond trusted this fake hunter even more. He was completely willing to listen to Dio's words. Dio still chose a corner for himself, crossed his arms and looked dangerous. Well, anyone can find this place if they follow the instructions. Don't praise me like that. Raymond and his colleagues were still staring at Dio. Hey Rank A, after finishing the job, tell us about your adventure, and also how to get the Medal of the Empire. Dio didn't like hearing this. Always on guard. Better not to get close to these guys if he didn't want to be discovered then he started to beat around the bush by warning everyone about the next journey and started advising everyone to take turns on night watch and go to sleep. Dio sat down to rest. It seemed that today's plan had been perfectly executed. He had managed to earn the trust of these hunters. Now all that was left was to make them think. That was the information about the new game update this time. Although he had memorized all the game scenarios, having played seven characters to max level. But some details related to this new update could render all his knowledge useless. He always had to carefully think each step as he had entered the game scene of the new update. The fire crackled. Dio and everyone else also began to sleep to prepare for tomorrow's journey. Dio again defeated an entry monster amid the cheers of everyone. 
They didn't know that Dio had used a trick, applying weed killer to his iron club, a blow that instantly killed the end monsters. This weed killer was also the result that his max level alchemist character had created. Only thing, no matter how many monsters he killed, Dio could not receive experience points, because this character had refused to change profession in the previous time. So all experience points could not be received. Dio looked at this scene with tears streaming down, speechless with frustration. Some monsters, even though Dio had drugged them with weed killer, could still fight. Raika rushed up to use his shield to block that powerful branch. Dio from behind began to guide him. Hey Raika, it's better to dodge these branches instead of using a shield to block. And Raymond, attack them as much as possible when they are in an abnormal state. After that, the end monster was defeated. Everyone cheered again, extremely grateful for Dio's guidance. Not good at all. The more days they loved Dio more. Then Dio's group moved to the end of the cave. Dio suspiciously went around to observe to find the secret cave that passed through the forgotten temple. Finally found, this hole was on the ground and constantly glowing, but it seemed a bit small. The hunter asked Dio, Are you sure we need to crawl through this hole? Of course, this is the shortcut to the forgotten temple. The other two frowned, the hole was too small, they had gained weight recently. Dio politely reached out to lead the priestess, Clara shyly reached out. This imposter was polite and considerate like a knight, reminding Clara to stay calm because after that they would fall freely together. Indeed, they fell freely from that hole, Clara's skirt wanted to fly up, she had to try to hold it back. Clara opened her eyes, they had arrived at the forgotten temple. The grand hall was unremarkable, an ancient architecture but still intact. Clara, following behind Dio, was continuously amazed, she had finally reached this sacred place. Then the other hunters also arrived in a clumsy manner, while Clara was still immersed in the content of the murals. Dio also carefully observed these wall paintings, knowing that they were the main content of the update. The painting depicted the war between the moon goddess Luna and the demon lord. This was also the origin of the chaos. Raymond, on the other hand, looked at a painting and felt suspicious, asking, What do you think about this painting? Are they executing someone? Not at all, this fool. This is a knight being knighted. The man in the golden armor is a knight ordained by Luna. Seeing this, Dio pushed them away. This painting was completely different from the plot he knew. This knight, according to Dio's judgment, was the knight in the game advertisement. Clara said, This is a prophecy. I have seen many different temples, but this is the first time I have seen a temple in a cave. Dio realized Clara was a priestess of Luna. He asked, What does the prophecy say? On the wall was a sentence written in ancient language, and Clara needed some time to translate it. The sentence was, We are nearing the apocalypse. How terrifying. Dio realized, this was also the first line in the song of the new trailer, so he was sure that this was a map that he had never experienced before. This also raised concerns in Dio's heart, because if he failed this time, he would have no other way to survive in this world. Then Dio led everyone deep into the temple exploring every nook and cranny, and then they came to a main hall, where there were huge statues of warriors. In the middle was a golden knight statue kneeling on the ground. This was also the knight in the trailer that Dio had seen. Clara found this statue very cute, while Dio was sweating, because it seemed that this statue was so realistic that it could move at any time. But Clara naively thought everything was fine, there was absolutely no sign of life here. Of course, under the gaze of a veteran player like Dio, he knew that an NPC always had a different aura than the unconscious statues. Look at this group. They are totally incapable of fighting against that powerful NPC. They might be defeated in a blink of an eye. They continued to the altar, where the system promptly announced that Dio had entered the area of the lost ancient heritage. Then, a mission notification appeared. You have completed the protection of the female priestess. At this point, Clara bowed in gratitude to everyone. She had finally arrived, marking the end of the group's mission. Just then, the system screen lit up again. You have met the conditions for the hidden mission of the ancient relic. Dio broke out in a cold sweat as the ancient text lit up on his purple class transfer scroll. The mission was automatically activated. Crack. The roof trembled slightly. Clara was startled. Could it be an earthquake? Boom. The Golden Knight statue suddenly moved, the stone layer enveloping the statue shattered, revealing a terrifying dark figure with glowing eyes. 
Raymond screamed, look over here. The statue is glowing, to the astonishment of everyone, the statue had indeed transformed, becoming a dark knight. Dio strained to see what kind of monster this was. Black legs, black arms, clad in pitch black armor. This NPC seemed to be level 300, extremely powerful, they were no match for it, and this NPC was originally a knight of the holy order, but had been cursed to become a death knight. Its eyes full of hatred opened, its aura intimidating. It was strange, Dio felt that this kind of monster should not appear in a level 100 area like this. Was it too exaggerated? With his gamer's instinct devoid of life, Dio knew that trying to defeat this terrifying monster was not a good idea. It seemed necessary to uncover the hidden truth to resolve this situation. The class transfer scroll lit up once more. A new mission officially opened. It was a hidden mission, to take the sword of the Death Knight. So that's how it is. Dio remembered once going on the game forum to gather information. There was a section about fighting knights. It seemed that knights would suffer great losses when confronted with the holy light of a cleric. Including the death knight, just bring along a cleric, and use the holy shield skill to cover the death knight then, the death knight will start to act crazily and break the shield, which will allow you to completely bypass the first step, haha. <laughs> Luckily, Dio had a cleric in his group. The whole place was ablaze with electricity. The Death Knight began to roar. Dare you step into the altar? Clara's small heart trembled. She began to feel scared. Monty, it's too dangerous. Dio looked over, placed his hand on Clara's shoulder to reassure her and said, Quickly use the magic shield. This event would help Dio successfully change his class. Escape from the shell of a homeless character at level 10. So he must complete it at all costs. Clara anxiously looked at Dio and screamed, You want to fight? You can't win, you have no chance. All Dio could do was hold Clara tightly and urge, We can't run either. Hurry up, deploy the magic shield. Do it quickly before it destroys us all. Little Clara, terrified, stared at the death knight without blinking. She had never been so scared in her life. Clara's whole body was shaking, but she finally raised her magic wand and began to chant, Light of the moon, protect us. Immediately after, a fresh green light radiated out. Clara pointed her magic wand at the death knight who was raising his sword. Dio also helped her a bit. This was the moment. Holy shield. The entire death knight was enveloped in a faint golden holy magic shield. It couldn't move. Clara couldn't believe it. Someone used the holy shield to bind the enemy like this. Who was this Monty guy? Dio turned back and reminded everyone not to be complacent. It was just step one. At this time, the sword in the hand of the Dark Knight had disappeared. Dio knew that he had passed step one, preparing for step two. Around the night, dozens of purple swords appeared, falling down and deeply embedded in the ground. A scream from behind Dio rang out, Sir Monty, be careful. At this moment Dio spoke up, Do you know who I am? The system announced that the mission had matched. The Death Knight suddenly calmed down. Dio understood in his mind, it was a coincidence that a knight appeared here. They always represented truth and justice in this game. Then, the mission space began to open. Both Dio and the knight were in a separate conversation space where no one else could hear. This dialogue was very important. It could contain clues to help Dio complete this hidden mission. He also had to refer to the trailer video. All of them carried clues to help players complete the hidden mission. The person wearing the golden armor in the trailer was originally the female Knight Dark a peerless beauty with golden hair. She had been waiting for the messenger from the military institute. But in the end, the messenger never returned. She waited and waited, and finally, with resentment, she turned herself into a death knight. Meanwhile, the messenger became a wandering spirit. Dio's eyes lit up. Everything was clear. This was the spot. Dark. I've completed the mission and returned. Dio showed her the Medal of Honor. She pondered, bent down to look closely and said, Well done. Dio's heart was still pounding. Finally, she recognized Dio as an ally. The screen announced that Dio had found the number one knight of the Holy Empire, Adelia Dark. At this point, Dark began her dialogue. A long time has passed. We were defeated and fell out of God's favor. The wait is eternal, and many comrades have passed away. Linebolt, Font, Chris, and... Dot dot dot, Dio had to fill in the dot dot dot. Damn it! What is this? Dio used all his wisdom to start looking for the missing name. 
Looking at the medal in his hand, Dio wondered if there was any missing condition. Hurry, hurry up, time is running out. Dark started to raise her sword to her chest and said, New recruit, you have lit up my hope. Swish. A sword swiped across Dio's shoulder, scaring him to pee his pants. This isn't a beheading, is it? Right. It's a knighting ceremony. In Dio's head, the song of the trailer echoed. She was like a flower, blooming amidst the brutal war. Dio tried to find clues in this song. It seemed that Dark was not just waiting for reinforcements. Could she also be waiting for her lover? The deadly sword was still on Dio's shoulder. A slight carelessness, and he would die instantly. Who has Dark been waiting for so long? Dio surely had enough clues, just had to choose the right name. He remembered, he also had an A-rank medal obtained from the Tarto Temple, which was also related to the Holy Empire. Holding this medal in his hand, Dio felt clearly this was not a coincidence. It seemed this item had its own mission in the new update. Dark was willing to wait for her lover even if she had to become a dead knight. Dio held up his prestigious rank A medal, instantly causing the fallen knight to tremble. Her sword fell, her black armor began to peel away, revealing a stunning face. The system screen announced that the statue of Adelia's weight had been met. She was ready to return to her path of truth. Adelia Dark suddenly looked at this medal and said, Does he still love me? Even though I am a bloodthirsty person? Even though my body has decayed? Dio could only lament. How would I know? Adelia continued her dialogue. He saved me from the brink between light and darkness. His soul makes me tremble. Miss, I am not the person you are waiting for. I am just the messenger bringing this token. But Adelia knew, she said I know. Then she tremblingly took the medal. As soon as she touched it, a dazzling golden light emitted from Adelia's body. Oh God, please accept the soul of the one I love into heaven. He is my son, my flower, the truth I seek. That was Adelia's prayer. She closed her eyes, tears streaming down her beautiful face. Then, the mission Fallen Holy Knight was completed. Reward. One ancient revenge sword. Reward. Life energy function. Due to receiving new function features, the user's status will be reconfigured. Dio immediately fell into the reconfiguration state, his whole body like continuous state of fragments breaking and reassembling. The pain was unbearable, making him unable to help but scream. Pop! Dio opened his eyes. Oh, has he returned to Earth? His familiar room. Damn, so lucky, it turned out to be just a dream, unexpectedly so real, becoming a hunter, a dead knight, all over. Suddenly there was a call from Monty. He raised his hand and counted. Still all ten fingers here. But why does it feel so unreal? What is this? Then Dio woke up, still in the same place in the Forgotten Temple. Clara joyfully ran in to see Dio. It's great that you have woken up. Dio rubbed his head. Damn, a dream within a dream. What a pity. Looking out the door, everyone had run to joyfully watch Dio wake up. The old hunters were extremely amazed, praising Dio like a god because they had seen with their own eyes Dio clear the entire map alone, including the level 300 monster. He looked at these teammates and was dumbfounded. As soon as the dead knight appeared, they ran faster than light. They set up camp on a lush green plain. The others were still too enthusiastic so Dio sent them away. Now was the time to review his spoils of war, a sword from Adelia, only usable at level 350, and it had an unknown special effect. Clearly, Dio had never seen this sword before. It even had a special effect category with three question marks. Very strange. Thinking back on everything, Dio summarized a bit. After this, the focus of the update was related to the ancient Holy Empire. A professional and veteran gamer like him also had a day of confusion like yesterday, so he needed to be more careful. Dio stepped out of the tent, saw Clara outside. She kindly asked, Monty, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm fine now. Then Dio told Clara and the others to continue their journey back. Dio had some business in the temple. Going inside once more, Dio opened the job change scroll. No more hesitation. Dio had met the conditions and changed jobs. The scroll glowed a mysterious purple. Dio felt the power of Darcy flowing into him. The scroll had completed its function, like a lock that had been fully unlocked. And Dio's job change process was completed. He had become the forgotten swordsman with a continuous development mechanism. Right after that, Dio kept leveling up. The monsters he had killed before, by now, all received enough experience points. 
This job was too strange. Dio had never heard of it. Moreover, it was a common job. It seemed not to meet his expectations. It should be the holy night of heaven, or overlord, or something more grand. And what is this development mechanism? Clara ran in to announce that she had finished her work here. Everyone could go back. Thinking for a while, Dio felt that everything seemed fine. There was no need to worry too much. So they all returned to Avera village. Raymond kept praising Dio as a great man. It seemed that he felt he had also become much stronger after the recent trip. These words made Dio a bit reluctant. He was just a leech sucking experience points throughout the trip. Raymond didn't forget to invite Dio back to the guild to receive the reward. But Dio didn't request any reward for this trip. Clara next to him also spoke up. Even if you don't request the reward. But the Luna Temple will always be grateful and repay you. That's right, my brother, don't be so cold, come on, let's have a few drinks. But at this time Dio had no mood, so he left, leaving the regretful people watching him go. Upon returning to his room, Dio removed his hooded cloak, finally able to alleviate some of the stifling discomfort. Now, he needed to focus on the next task at hand, which was to confront the wave of monsters flooding into this village. Dio opened his personal stats panel with 125 points yet to be allocated. The stats to be allocated included strength, agility, intelligence, health, and mana. Standing before the stats panel, Dio realized that the red energy of that female knight was the key to this class transfer. All of Dio's other max level characters had the same class transfer method. The only difference now was that everything had become reality. Dio clenched his fist, determined to rise up through this wave of monsters. First, he needed to carefully study the skill table of the new character. What skill is this? The Oath of Liberation. This skill helps to recruit a dependent, who will consume a certain amount of survival energy, and their bad status will also be reduced. The master will also lose 10% of his stats. Dio felt this skill was a bit dangerous. The master of the oath has to give up 10% of all stats, just to get one dependent. But thinking about it, this skill must be wonderful to require such a high price. Perhaps it even works on characters stronger than oneself. The next skill, slash, deals damage to the enemy in front. Scared yet, a skill couldn't be more ordinary. Dio tried this move, his whole body surged with a powerful red energy. This attack also depends on the state of the user. Can this skill also change? Just as Dio stomped his foot and showed anger, this energy recognized the mood of its master, the system announced, the energy of the forgotten swordsman has recognized the mark of anger. The slash skill has evolved. The system panel appeared, the forgotten swordsman. Sword skill, anger, a form filled with the power of anger. A classic technique, long forgotten. Effect, slash path strike a curve with a sword and deal damage to the enemy in front of you. Cooldown, five seconds. Deal watched intently, it seemed that his attack had become stronger. There were also conditions for upgrading skills, which required a proficiency level of 100, and another condition was to integrate the essence of fire. Now Dio understood why this character was classified as a character with development potential, because his skills could be upgraded and evolved according to his growth. As for the item of fire essence, Dio had it for a long time. Unfortunately, he left it in a warehouse in another city which was also obtained from killing high-level fire element monsters. Leaving a pile of luggage on the bed, Dio needed to prepare a bit for his leveling journey. He needed to focus on increasing the proficiency of this sword technique to 100, and also needed to upgrade himself to at least level 50 to cope with the wave of monster attacks. Bang! He killed a level 83 turtle. This turtle was easily defeated by Dio. By exploiting its slowness, Dio easily hit its vital points, quickly weakened it and finished it off. This process also really required concentration, because if it hit him once, Dio would go straight to heaven. Another turtle attacked, Dio successfully dodged, and at this moment, he thrust a sword, instantly piercing the turtle's head from bottom to top, successfully earning more than 3,000 experience points. He looked at his rusty sword. This was a basic sword bought in the item shop. If he used a better weapon, it would definitely significantly increase the efficiency of farming monsters. Unfortunately, his level was still too low. What to do? He could only repeat these basic actions over and over again. But Dio was also a diligent guy, never bored with this. 
The proficiency of the sword technique increased over time. From 2.4 it had increased to 16.8 and continued to increase. Finally, after a long day of hard work, he reached level 50, but he was exhausted. It's okay, it's okay, now he just needs to get the item of fire essence from the warehouse, and he can complete the upgrade of this sword technique. The system's notification board lit up again. The time until the monster wave attack was over five hours away. Come on, I've been waiting anxiously. Near the city gate, the commanding officer was ordering his men to prepare for the monster attack. Hurry up, repair the fence. Looking down from the city wall, a horde of ferocious monsters of all shapes had gathered below, preparing to charge in unison. Archers into position, bows were strung and pulled taut. Fire! An order was issued, thousands of arrows were launched straight at the monsters, whizzing through the sky. The monsters also began to charge, completely fearless of death. Hundreds of monsters were hit by arrows, but it seemed the deterrent power of these arrows was insignificant. Unable to stop their advance, the commander issued another order. The shield team charged first to block. The roar of the monsters was deafening. Behind the shield bearers, the spearmen were using their spears to stab at the monsters, trying to block and inflict as much damage as possible. They couldn't let them step into the village, otherwise, it would be a real massacre. The commander continuously observed and ordered the spearman team to try to maintain formation. But unexpectedly, a fast-footed monster had slipped into the rear of the formation. If no one stopped it, this formation would be pierced by it. But the next second, a young swordsman appeared. With a single slash, he cut the monster in half. The commander looked surprised at this swordsman. He is. Dio in a new outfit, a blood-red color. The soldiers clearly saw Dio and cheered in joy. That's the rank A hunter. The commanding officer bowed his head and thanked Dio profusely. Thank you sincerely for coming to help. You've been very famous recently. Oh, but you look familiar. That's right. He had met Dio when he was wandering around like a lost dog in this area before. Hearing this, Dio felt a chill run down his spine. Hastily waved his hand. You've mistaken me for someone else. Oh, anyway, it's good that you, the hunter, are here to help. It will make our victory even greater. Our warriors will support you. Dio confidently pounded his chest and said, All right. Leave it to me. Saying so, but in fact, Dio was not skilled enough to exterminate all these monsters, as most of them had a level double his. At this point, he had to use his unique tactics. Dio opened his HP viewing eyes. These eyes could only be activated when the character reached level 50. These eyes were also an item that Dio had saved in his inventory. Now he saw how truly useful it was. Immediately, the health bars of the monsters appeared above their heads. What Dio needed to do now was to find the monsters that were about to die and perform a last hit. Swish. One sword killed one, the second, the third. Just lift the sword. A monster would fall. The soldiers saw the scene. They could only open their mouths wide and gawk. Look at him. Not afraid at all. One slash cuts a monster in half. Dio dodged an attack, then retaliated. Another monster fell. He fought like a deity. No one knew that this guy specialized in lurking around monsters on the brink of death and then swooping in for the kill. The hardest part was done by those miserable soldiers. Now, he soared up beautifully, in a stance of the top swordsman, then slashed again. The two-horned monster was instantly split in two. Don't blame Dio, because if he didn't last hit, he wouldn't get any experience points, as these soldiers were not in the same party with him. Whoosh! A beetle monster's claw attacked from behind. Dio easily dodged, and counterattacked decisively with a lethal stab. It was also quite hard, not easy at all. A soldier standing next to a member of the hunter's guild exclaimed, Look, he uses a great sword as if he's holding a vegetable knife. The other person proudly puffed up his chest because he was also an acquaintance of Dio, of course, because he is a true rank A. A dying wolf, Dio couldn't miss this wolf, couldn't let it transform into a berserk, he used a leaf whistle to attract the wolf, then flew up and slashed down. The sword pierced the wolf's neck, instantly finishing it off. Dio leveled up. The soldier wanted to thank Dio emotionally, but he quickly pulled the soldier towards him. Because behind, a huge green orb was swinging a wooden club, conveniently finished it off too. A rain of experience points fell on Dio, continuously leveling up, not knowing how many levels he had risen. So noisy, damn it! 
Dio curse, because the notification screen kept popping up. But the soldier thought that Dio was complaining about him, so he cried loudly. Dio went to the east, the city gate here was being pushed back by monsters, the soldiers were shouting for help. Yum! Dio swallowed, five giant beetles were about to die, only a little blood left. Lifting his great sword, Dio ordered everyone to retreat, he alone rushed forward like a hero. Swish! The first one was gone, the soldier sitting on the ground exclaimed, Is it too few people? Just him alone. The monsters will counterattack. But next, the second beetle fell, the third, the fourth and the last one, all were defeated in the completely conquered eyes of everyone. But it's not over yet, boom! All five whole monsters exploded. Did he use magic? Is he a magician? At this time, it really overthrew everyone's prejudices. They were ready to believe that the rumor that this guy holds the Empire's noble medal is true. A magic swordsman is so powerful. While Dio was still farming monsters in the forest, he had achieved 100% mastery of his swordsmanship, unlocking a new skill called marking. Once a mark is placed on an opponent, the most recent marks will explode, up to a maximum of 5, dealing 150% fire damage for each mark. A special effect, it pushes the target back by 50%. Thus, in battle, all he needed to do was use his sword to place marks on 5 targets and they would explode. However, this skill could also inflict damage on the user. But no matter, it was still awesome. All he needed to do was increase his fire resistance, and he would be fine. With this thought, Dio smirked. Did anyone know? He was a wealthy man. Opening his inventory, he found himself a full set of six items called the Salamander's Light Armor, instantly increasing his fire resistance by 150 points, almost making him immune to fire. The armor shone brilliantly, and now Dio could confidently use his marking skill to shine on the battlefield. Boom boom. Fire was everywhere. Dio continuously used marking to increase his experience absorption efficiency on this battlefield. The insect-type monsters in front of the power of fire were just like paper. And there it was, the final boss of this wave of attack, a gigantic monster in the middle of the battlefield. Gulletin Bear, a named monster with a level reaching 150. Dio looked at it, and felt it was a tough nut to crack. Named monsters like this were bosses, always significantly stronger than the other monsters on the battlefield. The best strategy at this point was to run away, let the soldiers whittle it down a bit, and then Dio would jump out and land the last hit. Genius! Unfortunately, all the soldiers pointed at Dio and shouted, Stand back. Everyone stand back and leave this beast to Sir Monty. Dio laughed bitterly. Damn it! He didn't want to be treated preferentially like this, but he had to draw his sword and face the boss like this. There was no other way. Roar! The big bear roared, swung its claws, and struck down. Luckily, Dio dodged and counterattacked right in the bear's face. Damn it, it didn't hurt at all, it was too tanky. But it's okay, this monster also had its attack pattern. Just follow the pattern and this fixed attack, it would be easier to control it. At this point, the ultimate skill marking was not very effective because the monster's skin was too thick. A different plan was needed. So, Dio decided to invest his stat points into agility. His speed was immediately significantly improved, and so a man and a beast began to chase each other. Dio would lead it straight into the center of the battlefield. On the way running away from the bear boss, Dio was still diligently killing the dying monsters, leaving the bear boss to chase behind. Not only that, during the process of the bear boss chasing Dio, it would be accidentally hit by hundreds of other monsters, this whittling method was truly only something Dio could think of. At that moment, the boss bear suddenly halted, its body drenched in blood. It turned out that its adversary, Dio, had also stopped. Farewell, Dio said. Clang! A flask of pale yellow potion was hurled straight at the boss bear's face by Dio. The bear was still clueless about what was happening when Dio activated his signature move, the mark. Boom! A massive explosion shook the space. Dio confidently stood waiting. The bear, after taking the full brunt of the explosion, looked around bewildered for a second, then it too collapsed onto the ground. The soldiers standing nearby began to cheer wildly. Dio, with his sword slung over his shoulder, looked to his left. Oh damn, a group of monsters stood there, dumbfounded their boss just having been annihilated. 
Wasting not a second, Dio leaped straight into this group of monsters and roared like a man-man in Naruto. Because explosions are art. The sky was clear blue, the golden sunlight of 35 degrees Celsius poured down onto the plains. A carriage was leisurely making its way. Dio sat inside in silence. A guard wanted to inspect the carriage for security reasons. As soon as he opened the door, the guard saw Dio. Hey, isn't this Lord Monty? Are you heading to Libernas? I've heard of you from Avera village. It's fortunate to see you here. Looking forward to meeting again. The guard cheerfully inquired about Dio, who had recently become famous for his brave fight to protect his villagers, and this guard would go home and tell his neighborhood that he had seen the noble Lord Monty today. Dio didn't expect the news to spread so far. He also didn't want this much publicity. It seemed like the memories of Avera village were just yesterday. Back then he was a clueless level 10, had to think of all sorts of ways to hide himself, but today he was already a level 80 swordsman. Indeed, it was fortunate to have received the marking skill, thanks to which Dio's monster farming efficiency had significantly increased. The third condition Dio already had in his inventory in Libernas City. Besides, other items Dio needed could also be used. Mainly, they were at level 100. So what needs to be done now? After a moment of thought, Dio turned to ask the carriage driver, Excuse me, may I ask something? Has there been any rumors in Libanus recently? Rumors? Hmm. Recently I heard that in the Western Empire there's a group of rebels who declared independence. And the third prince is gathering troops to suppress them. Ah, uh, so that's the case. Dio remembered having completed that quest, in which players would ally with that prince of Fryan. The carriage driver added, Recently, there have been many rumors of people frequently disappearing, causing the lord much distress. Dio pulled out a silver coin and placed it on the straw pile, saying, Thank you kindly, old man. As if this information was quite useful to him, he seemed to have a good grasp of the plot at this point. Dio then halted here, even though Libernas was still quite a distance away. The carriage and the old driver gradually faded into the distance. Dio removed his hood. Up until now he had been careful to conceal his identity. Dio stopped amidst a lush carpet of vegetation, his gaze sweeping the distance. Right here was a hidden quest. There was a slave dungeon near the foot of Mount Tyr. This place was ruled by the most despicable and unruly gang in the OTF game. They trafficked in slaves, selling virgins, children, essentially a bunch of beasts, and they were also the cause of the recent disappearances. Did Knight Dio decide to exterminate this gang because he was disgusted by these matters? Of course not, he did it for an elixir that would enhance his agility after defeating this gang. Hiding in a clump of grass and looking across the bridge, he pulled his hood tighter. On the other side were two bandits chatting. They were discussing a recent auction, engrossed in conversation and unaware that Dio was holding a coil of rope. Whoosh! The rope, like a snake, shot out and wrapped around the neck of one bandit. What the? He was then dragged off like a dog, oblivious to what was happening. Who are you? But by this time, Dio had already rushed up to the two bandits. One was thrown down a deep ravine by the rope around his neck. The other could only scream in horror, intruder. Regrettably, before he could finish shouting, Dio had already slashed his throat. The artery was cut and blood spurted out like a shower. These guys were only around level 50. Too easy to handle. Dio didn't even need to use his skills. Oh, a pure white bird was trapped in a cage. Why did it suddenly irritate his eyes? Dio casually released the bird, scram and never get caught again. Got it? The bird flapped its wings and flew away as fast as lightning. In the depths of the cavern, a henchman was conversing with his leader. I wonder why the agents are so generous this time around? The leader, holding a large mug of ale, responded contentedly. How should I know? All that matters is the gold filling our pockets. If we focus our operations in the rural areas, the people of Libernas won't come looking for us, right? Don't worry. The nobles wouldn't waste their money just to turn this prairie upside down in search of us. Suddenly, the sound of heavy footsteps echoed, drawing the leader's attention. The henchman spoke up, Damn, who dares to disturb the boss like this? Only Dio, with an air of defiance, replied, So what? He boldly drew his sword and walked out, continuing his taunting, haven't you had enough to drink yet? Dio had already dealt with the underlings outside. When the two rear guards realized this, they rushed at Dio. You think you can survive after sneaking in here? 
dodging a blow, Dio retaliated with a fierce strike, sending one bandit straight to his doom, then swiftly turned to eliminate the second one. It was a professional move. Seeing this, the leader suddenly stood up and jumped back. He turned around to see why the useless bunch hadn't arrived yet. But understanding the situation, Dio said, the rest have been taken care of by me. You're the last one, don't worry, I'll be quick. A minute later, the leader, covered in blood, was crawling on the ground, pleading pitifully, What do you want? Please spare me. But Dio didn't let him say more. He finished him off cleanly. Although he knew these people deserved to die, the feeling of killing was not comfortable at all. He pulled out a key from the bandit leader's body. Dio looked at the chest next to him. Surely it was to open this chest. Indeed, a precious elixir was now in Dio's hands. Drinking this potion would increase one's agility by five points. It was extremely valuable. Opening the lid, without further ado, Dio drank it all in one gulp. Ah, uh, after drinking, he felt completely refreshed. No longer tired, Dio didn't expect it to have such an effect. It was as cool as a fruit juice. Having finished his task, Dio was about to return when he heard a faint whimper. Was there someone here? The sound seemed to emanate from behind this wall. The slave auction had ended, so why would there still be slaves here? Suddenly, Dio remembered a masked girl from the game trailer. Could it be her? Swiftly, Dio discovered a secret entrance. With a push, the earthen wall crumbled, revealing a path. This place was filled with sickly, worthless slaves. The stench was unbearable, assaulting Dio's senses. This was his first time here, and he found it utterly repugnant, having to cover his nose. At the end of the tunnel, a wooden door appeared, the most conspicuous thing in this place. Opening the door, he found a girl trapped within a circle of verdant magic. He recognized her immediately, a cherubic face and platinum hair. The frail girl spoke, please, kill me. Dio studied her for a moment, his intuition telling him that she was a special character. If he wasn't mistaken, this girl was Sepia, a dark witch used by the bandits as a sacrificial offering. Her brother was the leader of the Second Knight Regiment in Libernas, Sigmund, who was expected to awaken after her death. Sigmund would become the Holy Knight of Judgment of the Lunar Church. Thus, Sepia's death was crucial in the storyline of this update, the next chapter of the narrative. Many players had tried to save her, but all had failed because she was cursed with the mark of death, a profoundly dark and insidious curse that no magic or medicine could dispel. This was why the beautiful girl was always destined to die. Sepia continued to plead with Dio to end her life, but Dio only tightened his grip on his sword, doing nothing. But wait, there seemed to be a way. He had the skill oath of liberation. If the target accepts, the life energy of the skill user will be consumed, and the target's abnormal status effects will be dispelled. The amount of life energy consumed varies depending on the target's condition. Afterwards, the target will become dependent on the skill user. 10% of the skill user's stats are lost after each contract. The most important part was this line, the target's negative status will be dispelled. Dio read it over and over, still unsure. Could he dispel the mark of death? There was a vague feeling that Dio could do something for this girl, save her from death. But then again, using a skill to save a stranger while losing 10% of all his stats made Dio hesitate. He wondered if the price was worth making her his subordinate. Why was he, Dio, hesitating over such a matter? His human nature suddenly surged forth. Damn it, standing before such a pitiful person, how could he hesitate about saving her? Whether she was an NPC or not, she was now standing before Dio in flesh and blood. Moreover, she had a hot figure. Dio suddenly remembered the name of the bandit leader he had killed earlier, gritted his teeth. I am not a monster like them. Dio sat down in front of the girl and gently said, I will save you. I have a way to lift this curse. Sepia looked up, her eyes wide open, seemingly unable to believe these words. But her gaze seemed a bit scary to Dio. He worriedly asked, What do you want to do? But Sepia just kept silent. After a while, Dio felt that she was truly safe with him. Then he started to hold the girl's hand and perform the skill of the liberating oath. The target has agreed, the system notification. If Dio's vitality is not enough to perform, then the skill may fail. Do you agree? Of course, he agreed. Right where the two hands met, a light shone brightly, dazzling. Just bright enough, don't be too bright. Damn. The whole space was white, the system screen announced. 
You have just completed the hidden mission Save Sepia. Dio read this announcement and understood. But the next second he was teleported to a completely unfamiliar time and space. Where is this? Dot. A space full of lava fire. The sky was red as if it was the end of the world. No, this was the end of the world. On the other side, the demon army was roaring ferociously, surging forward, and on this side, the golden armored warriors were straining themselves to rush onto the battlefield. The golden helmet of each warrior had a symbol of the third eye. This pattern and this style of armor Dio had never seen before. A three-headed dog, the guard of hell was constantly barking, and it was about to spit fire. It seemed that the human side was about to lose. At this moment, a dazzling light shone down from the clouds, the monsters were blinded and could do nothing. Dio also focused on observing. An angel with golden hair like the morning sun, a seductive and bewitching body, a beautiful face, she looked at Dio with gentleness, stunned for three seconds, Dio was completely immersed in her beautiful eyes. She began to close her eyes and pray, this light will always be with you. End of the movie, Dio awoke, coughing violently. Was it all just a dream? Before him still lay Sepia, unconscious. Perhaps the illusion was related to Sepia. The angelic figure looked strikingly similar to Sepia, except the angel had golden hair. While Sepius was platinum blonde, Dio calmly observed the unconscious Sepia, beginning to piece together the clues from the recent illusion. A great battle, an unidentified woman descending from the sky, they looked so alike. Surely, this girl was not an ordinary NPC. Suddenly, a system notification appeared. Hidden mission, save Sepia. Sepia has been cursed by the mark of death. This is a powerful violation that even the holy arts of the Luna Temple cannot affect. You have found a way Tio break this curse by using another contract Tio overcome the abnormal condition. Reward, level 2 liberation promise, expected loss of vitality when establishing the vow, reduced by 90%, consumption parameters when the vow is established, reduced by 10%. Dio you want Tio establish the vow? Dot. Naturally, he chose yes. The curse was immediately started to be nullified by the system. Dio's vitality value also gradually decreased with the progress of this dissolution. Then, a miracle occurred. Around Sepia, faint red light spots were continuously converging and merging into her body. Dio felt that this girl was automatically restoring her own vitality. Phew! Fresh blood spurted from Dio's mouth. The system warned that the host's vitality was below 10%. Damn it, had he been too careless? Not only was the vitality index decreasing over time, but the feeling of pain was also increasing. At this moment, Dio felt as if a sharp wound had pierced straight into his stomach. Fresh blood continuously gushed out. Sepia began to open her eyes. She saw Dio trembling in a pool of blood. While she herself was no longer in pain, a stream of extremely warm and safe red energy filled her body. Sepia closed her eyes again, recalling everything. Why did this strange boy willingly sacrifice his own vitality for her? A while later, it was finally done. Dio ceased his bleeding, having successfully lifted the curse on Sepia, and his skill of oath liberation also leveled up to two. Damn it, there was no need for a level up. After all, this damned skill made Dio feel a pain that was unbearable. Holding Sepia's hand, Dio led her outside. At this moment they needed to find a safe place for both of them. As for Sepia, in her mental world, she was standing in a dark area, suddenly seeing Dio slowly walking towards her. She thought it was her brother Sigmund. Dio reached out his hand wanting to take her along, but Sepia realized this was not her brother. But this feeling of safety was strange. She was not scared of this man. Then, Sepia opened her eyes wide, waking up. Oh, what happened? She was no longer in pain. The headache had disappeared. Sepia could not remember the last time she felt this comfortable. Who was that over there? A strange man, covered in blood. Next to him were several empty vitality supplement bottles. Sepia curiously crawled closer. She did not understand why this man risked his life to save her. Was he sent by her brother? Looking at this completely unfamiliar face, not a member of the Libernas City Night Corps. Sepia carefully observed Dio's weapon. This girl was very astute wanting to see any symbols on the weapon to determine Dio's origin, but the old weapon had no symbols at all. Suddenly, Dio opened his eyes, for eyes met, Sepia blushed slightly, then the girl panicked, gasped and backed away, 
like a little cat caught stealing food by its owner. Dio looked at her, knowing that he had passed out, then quickly introduced himself. I am Dio. Then he shook hands with Sepia. Sepia also shyly turned her face away and said, I am Sepia. Thank you for saving me. Sepia looked at Dio, probing. How do you know where I am? Did my brother send you? Dio was taken aback. He only knew that this girl was a sacrifice, and she was Sigmund's sister, nothing more. But if Dio admitted that he knew Sepia was Sigmund's sister, it would be troublesome, as Sepia would start questioning how he knew. So, Dio cunningly feigned ignorance, asking Sepia, your brother? Who is he? Sepia looked at Dio strangely and asked, then why are you? Of course, Sepia wanted to know why Dio risked his life to save a stranger. Dio needed to hide this, so he said, because I want to hear your thanks. Good heavens, was this reason too flippant? It made Sepia stare in surprise. The two sat silently by the fire, each with their own thoughts. Dio knew that this girl seemed to have forgotten the subordinate contract she had signed in the cave. If she had signed a contract to become Dio's subordinate, her actions would certainly be somewhat restricted. The system panel displayed all of Sepia's stats, including a trust score, which was currently 10 points. There was also a subordinate control panel, with a force obedience button, a binding button, and a destruction button. With the obedience feature, if Sepia resisted Dio's orders, she would feel pain. If she moved away from Dio, the binding feature would also cause Sepia pain. And if Sepia broke the subordinate bond, she would die due to the destruction feature. Horrible, isn't it? It's a brutal contract, but it pleased Dio. Owning a slave with full rights like this was worth 10% of all stats. But don't get me wrong, if he didn't do this, this beauty would surely die from that curse. The thing to do was to interact and talk with her to get more familiar, but also to avoid scaring her. Dio started a conversation. You said your brother is the leader of the second night force of Libernas City, right? Let's go to that city. Hearing this, Sepia still felt a bit wary. How could a good girl easily trust the words of a stranger? Besides, this guy's face didn't look very honest, not much different from those slave traders. Seeing this, Dio reached out his hand, Sepia. Take my hand, then Dio glared, this is an order. Sepia was hesitant but immediately grabbed Dio's hand. Sepia didn't understand what had happened, she unconsciously grabbed Dio's hand reluctantly. Dio withdrew his hand and decided to tell the truth, you are currently my subordinate, as we have signed a service contract. A subject bound by an oath will experience pain if they violate or move away from the contract signer. However, this has nothing to do with my wishes and everything is according to the contract. Please understand I had no choice. This was the only way to save you. Even if we don't like it, we have to abide by this contract. Upon hearing Dio's words, Sepia stood in silence. Dio knew that no one would willingly wander with a stranger. Sepia continued to gaze at Dio without blinking. But suddenly, the system reported that Sepia's trust level had increased by three points. Dio was surprised. He didn't expect it to increase. Then Sepia spoke, I offer my life to you, Dio, please take care of me. That was good news, Dio didn't expect her to be so easily persuaded. After that, they both headed towards Libernas. In a dark headquarters, a masked leader was interrogating his subordinate, Speak, why has the sacrifice disappeared? The subordinate knelt down trembling, Sir, when we arrived, all the bandits had been killed. Without uttering another word, the leader raised his hand, chains flew out from nowhere binding the subordinate, tightening more and more. The leader roared in anger. You useless fool, do you know how valuable the sacrifice is that you treated her like that? He was angry because he had been too complacent and didn't send more guards. With a snap, the chains tightened to their limit, and the subordinate died instantly. Initially, this leader only wanted to kidnap Sepia as a hostage to threaten her brother, Sigmund. But then he discovered that Sepia had the potential to become a powerful sorcerer, so he changed his plan. Sacrificing a powerful sorcerer would help him grow his power from three circles to seven circles, which could be understood as mastering magic from level three to level seven. Damn it, the more he thought about it, the more frustrated he became. All because of these useless slaves, die, you bastards. Suddenly, another subordinate ran in, panting heavily. But as soon as he saw his colleague's mangled body on the floor, his face turned pale with extreme fear. But there was good news, he loudly reported, 
Lord Victor, we have found the whereabouts of the sacrifice. She is not far from that cave. Old man Victor heard this, immediately flung his cloak, and issued a steel order. All of you follow me. Let's see who dares to steal from me. Damn it. How could you possibly have such ability? I've never heard of such a wonderful power that can even defeat my curse. I also know that not everyone can sign such a contract. Oh dear, these questions hit Dio hard, leaving him in pain, unsure of how to respond. Sepia, with a stern face, interrogated Dio, like a wife asking her husband why he went fishing from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. without catching any fish. Dio could only awkwardly respond to get by. I learned it from a temple. Is that true? Sepia asked, but her faith increased a bit. Oh my, so it can increase like that. Then it was Dio's turn to ask, why were you captured? Hearing this, Sepia's face suddenly darkened. Is it you who demands me to answer? Dio hastily defended, no, no. If you don't want to, you don't have to answer. Sepia covered her mouth and gave a small smile. This guy was really cute, not wanting to trouble her even a bit. Sepia's faith just like that increased a bit. Sepia also didn't want to make Dio uncomfortable, she said, I have no reason to blame the person who saved me, in fact. But before she could finish her sentence, Dio had pulled her hand, embracing Sepia's body. What are you doing? Sepia thought this pervert wanted to molest her. Dio just stared straight ahead, you look behind you. A long streak of dark energy just shot to where Sepia was standing. Sepia immediately recognized this dark energy. It was him, not anyone else, the one who had imprisoned Sepia. Yes, it was Victor, the Dark Lord. He and his minions slowly approached Sepia and Dio, their demeanor completely ill-intentioned. At first glance, Dio recognized him, Victor. Oh, you recognize me? Dio only recognized him through that strange symbol. Looking at you like a noble, yet you dare to interfere in my business? Dio gently pushed Sepia back a bit. So, sorry for interfering without asking, Victor. A second later, Dio swung his hand up. Five wooden sticks carrying the mark of the fire charm shot towards the old man. Well then, now I'll repay you for this. Dio cheekily spoke. Boom boom. The sound of fire exploding. All of Victor's minions were hit. Dio still smiled, saying, Now it's just us. Lord Victor looked at the scene, finding this rascal somewhat interesting. He was not a hero, but a crafty and cunning rogue. Dio looked at him, unscathed, knowing that he had hit a snag today, probably because this guy had reached the level of a proficient level 3 wizard. Indeed, because he had not yet sacrificed Sepia, he could not reach level 5. Sweat poured out, Dio seemed to have a bit of luck, barely able to confront him in a battle. Victor, with his right hand full of dark energy, pointed straight at Dio. Whoosh! A beam of dark energy came flying, Dio dodged it, immediately rushed up to counterattack. Victor's henchman felt scared, not expecting this seemingly weak guy to have such courage. Just half a second later, Dio was in front of him. A sharp sword swished past, he was dead. The remaining henchman cast a magic shield for defense. Bang! A slash shattered the shield, the second slash, Dio ripped open his chest. The remaining henchman panicked, preparing to counterattack. Protect Lord Victor before he completes his magic circle. Dio threw a piece of wood containing the hidden mark of fire charm. Boom. Another guy was gone. Only two left. Swish. The fourth guy. Swish. The fifth guy. Each only needed one slash. Died instantly. But at this time, Lord Victor also completed his magic circle. Named Eternal Curse. All the dark energy from space converged on his right hand. Run, boy, no matter how far you run, this curse will follow you, even to the ends of the earth. Ha ha, you're dead for sure. Thud. The attack hit the target. Damn it, Dio laughed. Dio had used one of Victor's subordinates to block the attack for him. Certainly a hero would never do that. So heroes often die early. But not Dio. Thank you for taking the hit for me, Dio said to the corpse. Then turned to Victor and taunted, That was a good hit, old dark wizard. Victor gritted his teeth in anger, being taunted by a snot-nosed brat, wishing he could chop him into pieces. Victor went mad, you son of a bitch. Then he burst out all his energy, intending to deliver a blow to destroy everything. But Dio only laughed. Was the old man embarrassed to the point of anger? Would this spreading attack have any effect? You are a level 3 wizard. Your casting speed is too slow. 
Dio immediately rushed up. Old man Victor also prepared to counterattack. I should have been able to reach legendary level 7 if my sacrifice hadn't been stolen. What? Level 7? You are restricted to level 5. But Victor didn't want to hear this at all. Die. His two hands shot out an astonishing force. Dio quickly threw a corpse forward. Of course, he had engraved a fire charm on the corpse. Boom. A loud noise, it seemed Victor had been hit. His whole body was burning, his face twisted in pain. Dio slowly advanced, come on, let's end this. Oh, but something was wrong, the fire was being drawn out of his body, even though the fire charm skill wasn't of the fire system, but fire was still fire, how could it be separated like this? It seemed the fire was being affected by the dark energy on Victor's body, Dio started to sweat from tension. Sepia behind suddenly cried, tears pouring out nonstop. She also gasped for breath. Dio looked at this scene, completely stunned. Sepia had transformed. Her eyes were completely bright. Her whole body was covered by a golden halo, looking very dangerous. Dio softly called, Hey Sepia. But she didn't respond at all. Her eyes had completely lost reason. Sepia suddenly arched her body and screamed, You. Feel this pain yourself. Then... Countless invisible chains shot out from Sepia straight towards the wizard Victor. His whole body was wrapped by his own dark chains. He screamed in pain. While Sepia wore a strange smile, Stop. Please stop. Dio looked at this move, feeling the strange energy of Sepia. What was this energy? On the other side, poor Victor was screaming in despair. The pain was indescribable. Dio felt it. It was energy that included ego, a type of soul energy. Only the powerful NPCs at the end of the game possessed this terrifying power, but only top players had the opportunity to experience it. Yet this girl could do it, truly a talent. Then Sepia lost consciousness and fell down. Dio quickly caught her body. Her tears were still on her eyelashes. Dio felt a bit of sympathy. This little girl clearly couldn't control her own formidable power. Perhaps in the future, Dio would have to think of a way to help Sepia a bit. At the headquarters of the Second Night Squadron in the city of Libernas, a scout reported to the deputy leader, Sir, we've found a clue. Sigmund, his eyes filled with anticipation, looked at the scout, Really? Indeed, we've found traces of the bandits at the border between the prairie and the foot of Mount Tyr. It seems there's a collaboration between the bandits and the slave traders. Hearing this, Sigmund's eyes filled with hatred. He cursed those damned bastards, how dare they? Follow them quickly. Don't let any of them escape. The love this brother had for his sister was boundless. Nothing hurt more than knowing his sister had been taken by his enemies. Sepia, in a new hazelnut-colored dress, followed Dio towards Libernas. Is this the right way? Of course, I told you I know a shortcut to Libernas. Indeed, he was a master of shortcuts. Sepia looked at Dio with a hint of annoyance. Dio thought she still didn't trust him, but that wasn't the case. It was his somewhat reproachful tone that displeased Sepia. He had played this game with seven max level characters, so he had traversed every path and alley in this world, so as he said, even if he closed his eyes, he could find the correct path. To avoid losing Sepia's trust, Dio better keep his mouth shut a bit. It wasn't good when this fragile beauty was annoyed. At first, he thought this delicate girl needed protection, but she turned out to be quite formidable. Sepia was tired, Dio carried her on. While checking Sepia's stats, everything was normal. Only her character class was hidden. Perhaps this girl also had extraordinary talent, corresponding to her brother, a powerful knight. Look, Sepia, we'll be in Libernas soon. Sepia just nodded. The two were still a bit awkward. Dio needed to earn more of Sepia's trust before he started questioning her about the source of her power. Deep inside Dio, a fear still lingered. If he messed up like that guy, he was done for. He needed to quickly understand Sepia's backstory and find a good solution for all of this. Or should he just ask? Dio stopped Sepia. I have a question. Are you a heretic? Hearing this, Sepia's heart trembled. Her trust score dropped by five points. Inside the Adder Church of the Holy Kingdom, a reverend monk bowed in gratitude. Thank you for making the long journey here. The person he was addressing was none other than Sepia, who responded with a radiant smile. He then led Clara into the Grand Hall, a vast space that left Clara in awe. The monk paused and advised Clara, Now that we're here, I'm sure you've been briefed on proper conduct. 
but I must remind you to behave appropriately. Clara was taken aback by this. It seemed she was about to meet someone of high stature. A woman sat in the middle of the grand hall, her long blonde hair reaching her shoulders. Clara felt tense. She had never before met anyone of such high rank in the church. Clara knelt on the sanctuary, placed her hand on her chest, and respectfully said, I am honored to meet the esteemed Luna of the church. Raise your head, Sister Clara. Thank you for coming all this way. The woman's voice rang out clear. She was Kalina Luna, a woman of unparalleled beauty. Clara raised her head and said, It is an immense honor to meet you, the revered leader of the Holy Church. You must know why I have summoned you here. I heard that you have been to the Forgotten Temple. Please tell me, everything that you saw, everything that you experienced there. And so, Clara began to recount her entire journey, until their expedition returned to the village of Avera. Upon hearing this, the female church leader signaled for Clara to stop. Thank you, Sister Clara. Your abilities have greatly contributed to our church. Dear Sister, the church will reward you appropriately. The light of the Luna God will continue to illuminate the path you have chosen. Clara was overjoyed at these words and said, Thank you, revered church leader. I offer my deepest respect to the Luna God and you. After that, Clara was escorted away. Kalina was left alone in deep thought. She then summoned Paul Eppenhaus, Archbishop of the Luna Church. Our sister did not lie. Paul understood immediately. A character named Monty mentioned in her story seems to be an imposter. But what he is impersonating, of course, is being awarded a medal. And there is no strong character that the Luna Church does not know. Afterwards, Kalina issued an order, sending a letter to Libernas to have someone there search for where this Monty character might be. Sepia looked at Dio anxiously. His question left her flustered, unsure of how to respond. Why do you ask me that? The one who kidnapped me is a dark priest, and he is definitely a member of a sect. Dio looked at Sepia seriously. A common characteristic of heretics is that they seek power, not righteousness. But the power you are using is a kind of energy that I have seen before. It contains wildness and chaos within. So that's it. Sepia had always been suspicious of Dio. She had no idea that he was also suspicious of her. Sepia really suspected that Dio was a high-ranking member of the Lunar Church. Ordinary hunters or strong people do not have a skill set like this guy. Meanwhile, the Lunar Church had no good intentions towards Sepia at all. But now, Sepia decided to tell everything. Dot when I was young, I went through states of unconsciousness and overload with mana energy. My family sought many powerful wizards but could not find a solution. You can't control it with your will? Yes. You might find it hard to believe, but it does not come from a demon. Usually. When it happens, the overload of mana will release magic originating from fire or light. At this point, Dio remembered the scene in the illusion before. Indeed Sepia had appeared as an angel. Could it be that Sepia's power really belongs to the holy system? Please believe me, even though I am overloaded with mana, I have never harmed a human being. Eh? Damn, this scared Dio. It seems that when she dealt with that wizard, she didn't know it all, just acting on instinct. And this girl is so honest all of a sudden. Could it be because Dio scared her? Sepia spoke sincerely. Because she also wanted Dio to be sincere with her, Sepia said, Dio, are you a supervisor of the Luna Church? Sepia spoke intermittently. It was really awkward to ask like this. Dio hastily waved his hand in response. No. Haven't I told you that I'm just an ordinary hunter? But you come from the East, don't you? You once said. What? You say the East. You think I'm an Easterner? And why is it a problem that I come from the East? I heard that many people living in the East have become employees of the Luna Church. Oh my, anyway, I'm not them. I don't like to live a constrained life like that, Dio decisively replied. The investigators of the Holy Office are those known as the first moon of the Luna Deity. They wield immense power and are also the most stubborn and rigid in all activities, even the smallest ones, ready to chop someone down if they are suspected of heresy. Dio continued to explain, If I were an investigator, I would have definitely chopped you down as soon as I suspected you. That's a fact that Sepia also had to admit. We will soon reach Libernas. It's best if we harmonize our story, right? I shouldn't tell your brother that you are now my follower, should I? Indeed. So we need to fabricate a story, that is, you have to go with me because I can treat your illness. But no one understands the temperament of her brother better than Sepia. 
He won't believe you. He will definitely not let me leave. So do we have to tell him the truth about this submission contract? At this point Sepia suddenly pondered and said, Please promise me, if my brother wants to go with us, please stop him. Sepia absolutely did not want to see her brother throw away his entire future and career for her. In the dark past, Sigmund had risen from the slums, built a great career. He is now the head of the Second Night Corps of Libernas. If Sigmund loses everything because of Sepia, she would rather die. Dio scratched his head, bored, if Sigmund went with them, it would be so much better, after all, he was quite strong. But Sepia was too earnest, so Dio could only reluctantly agree to this. They prepared to move forward, for Libernas was right in front of them, but the sound of galloping horses echoed, a few knights were riding like madmen below. Seeing the familiar flag, Sepia happily ran straight ahead, Dio hurriedly followed Sepia, don't run. But this girl was too happy to see the sign of her brother, she kept urging Dio to hurry up while running. The leader was Sigmund, who was rushing fiercely, the dust behind him had spread all over an area. He was going mad, looking for someone to vent his anger. Dio saw this look, damn it, this was not good. Seeing Dio as an enemy, he yelled angrily, die, damn it, this was bad. Sigmund's sharp sword aimed straight at Dio and slashed down, clang. The sound of two swords colliding. No one knew what was happening. Dio gritted his teeth in anger. Whoosh. Dio was thrown away. The strength of this guy was indeed not to be underestimated. Dio waved dismissively at Sigmund. Hey, brother, there seems to be a misunderstanding. But Sigmund paid no mind, only raising his sword and preparing to attack Dio once more. Whoosh. The blade of the sword grazed Dio's head, severing a few strands of hair. Dio was forced to fend off this ferocious beast, clang clang. The sound of swords clashing echoed continuously. A powerful slash, the sword's aura cut a piece of skin on Dio's cheek. Looking to the side, he saw Sepia was safe behind the knights. Hmm. Dio had no help whatsoever, so he felt a bit lucky that Sigmund had not yet fully awakened. Dio planted his sword into the ground. A net of energy emanated from his body, immediately pushing Sigmund back. But Sigmund quickly counterattacked. What trick are you trying to pull? Whoosh. Sigmund's sword swung at him, but Dio quickly jumped into the air to dodge the attack. In midair, Dio prepared to counterattack. Bang. A kick from above hit Sigmund's chest. As expected, Sigmund also used his sword to block. At this point, Sigmund had to look at Dio with a different eye. I've never seen this fighting style before. Not bad. Suddenly a woman's scream rang out. How about this? Zap. A magic attack was past Sigmund's hair. Too unexpected, he was completely unprepared. But luckily it was just a warning shot. Sigmund roared. Who is it? It was Sepia, standing with her hands on her hips, looking at her brother with annoyance. Recognizing his beloved sister, Sigmund's face twisted. It's you. Why? Shocked yet, true blood is thicker than water. As soon as he saw his biological sister, Sigmund's expression changed too quickly. Sepia pointed at her brother and yelled, Big brother, are you crazy? Planning to kill me too, he he. Watch the fun, Dio grinned and watched the two siblings bicker. On this side, Sigmund was still stunned, not understanding why his sister appeared here, thought she was being kidnapped by bandits. Sigmund stammered, What are you saying? How could I? Sepia made a disappointed face. Sigmund immediately dropped the act and rushed to explain, Wait. How could I? Would you die without him? I uh, know. The situation was a bit complicated. It seemed it would take some time for this explanation. In the grand city of Libernas, at the headquarters of the city's second night squadron, Dio and Sigmund were in conversation. What did you say? You're a doctor from the east and you've treated sepia? Sigmund was continuously surprised by Dio's story, while Dio could only laugh, his sweat pouring like rain. But one part was truly hard to believe that Dio had fought and defeated the Dark Wizards, successfully rescuing Sepia. Sigmund only listened skeptically. But Sepia on the other hand was deeply concerned. This old man lied so smoothly. His mouth and eyes never flickered. She had to train him not to lie to her. Sigmund was also very polite and considerate. After hearing this fairy tale, he began to humbly and respectfully thank Dr. Dio, and also apologized for the previous misunderstanding. Then, Sigmund asked further, You don't look like a doctor, yet you possess combat skills, 
are all doctors from the East like you? See, this guy was not easily convinced. Dio had to fabricate more of his story. Actually, I come from across the sea. The journey is so far that I need martial arts for self-defense. And there's one more thing. Sepia's curse has not been completely cured. I use the drug manufacturing techniques of the eastern continent to delay the destructive progression of this curse. This is just a temporary solution. This curse cannot be resolved by conventional traditional methods. Hearing this, Sigmund felt heartbroken, involuntarily clenching his fist. Do you have a better treatment method? Dio smiled. The fish bit the hook, of course I do. Dio began to chirp like a bird. Who do you think I am? I am the number one doctor from the east, and I have sailed across the ocean to get here. Hearing this, Sepia clenched her fists. Looking at Dio with great indignation, this old man was too much. But Dio continued his story in my hometown. We have a similar case. We call it the case of the patient hit by an invisible poison. The patient and my doctor always have to be together, because the treatment method and the medicine constantly change. Therefore, Sepia must go with me. We will go together to find herbs. Hearing this, Sigmund couldn't believe his ears. What was this lame duck saying? Dio answered again. Sepia needs to leave with me. Immediately Sigmund felt like a volcano about to erupt. Damn it, how could it be? I won't allow it. Can I replace her as the herb gatherer? Dio shook his head. Unfortunately, only I can find and identify these rare ingredients. If the medicine is not used immediately after preparation, the curse will become worse. Sigmund was truly panicked. I can't just let Sepia leave like this. Sepia next to him reached out and touched her brother's hand. Brother, I'm fine. Look, I came back and I'm still healthy and safe. Isn't that right? Dio on the other side crossed his arms. Looking at this scene, he was truly fed up. Sigmund skillfully sent Sepia to rest, after which he and Dio would have a man-to-man -man talk. Sepia cheerfully said, All right, remember to have dinner with me later. We haven't seen each other for a long time. As Sepia walked past Dio, he suddenly grabbed her hand. Let me check your pulse. How is it? Then Dio whispered in Sepia's ear, Don't wander around. Pretend to be sick and then write a letter to Sigmund. After that, Dio pretended as if nothing had happened and let Sepia leave. Only two people were left. Silence. Suddenly, Sigmund crossed his legs and spoke coldly. Cut the crap. If you have a problem, just say it. Dio smirked and said, What a coincidence. I was going to say the same thing. Who are you? Ah, it seemed this guy didn't like the previous answer. Perhaps Dio should tell him a bit of the truth. I wander around this area with the name Dio, making a living as a mercenary. Do you have any medals? I plan to earn one here, in Libernas. How can I trust that you can heal Sepia? Hmm, should he tell the truth, your sister is currently my servant. She signed a contract and that's why she escaped the curse. Better not looking at the murderous intent of that monster. Dio casually replied, I've said it before, I've cured this disease. Sigmund just laughed, you're still talking nonsense. Why is that? You know lying is very dangerous. Did you really save Sepia? Why did you do that? Dio was a bit nervous, but quickly regained his composure. How would I know? Is there a reason to save someone? Dio answered sincerely. Sigmund's sharp eyes looked into Dio's eyes and felt that it was not a lie. I really don't know if I can let Sepia go with you, because you have too many suspicious points. Dio agreed with this point. He had the ability to analyze and see that Dio was full of suspicious points. First Dio was able to defeat all the dark witches, then he was able to cure the curse of the mark of death, while Sigmund's people couldn't at all. To sum up, can you really cure Sepia? Dio replied, I'm sure I can cure her. Ah, uh, there's also another person, that's the Archbishop of the Luna Church. Hearing this, Sigmund clenched his fist in anger. Those guys can't be trusted at all. Dio knew full well that Sigmund had no love for the church. Hence he brought up that name, simply to narrow down Sigmund's choices. To let Sigmund decide who was the lesser evil, the church or Dio. Both fell silent, thinking to themselves. Dio smugly watched Sigmund make his choice, while Sigmund only felt a surge of frustration. He had never felt so powerless. Dio quickly added another story. I can help you with the recent disappearances. Perhaps this would persuade Sigmund, as Dio would try to demonstrate his capabilities. Sigmund skeptically asked, How can a foreigner like you help in this matter? Dio simply said, The dark alleys. Sigmund squinted, 
His sword slipped from its sheath and the blade pointed straight at Dio's neck as fast as light. A slight cut appeared on Dio's face. But Dio was not afraid. He remained seated. Blood dripped onto the blade. Dio still smiled casually and said, Calm down, deputy. I can understand why you are wondering how I know about that place. You can see that the recent disappearances are becoming more frequent. And they are related to the thugs in the dark alleys. I wonder where you will start looking for your sister, surely. If I'm not mistaken, you will crush all those dark alleys. I also heard that the criminal groups in the narrow alleys of Libernas are very powerful and notorious. Even the Night Corps dare not touch them. These words of Dio touched Sigmund's black heart, but Dio continued. When you stir up a hornet's nest that ends up being irrelevant, it will be a major headache for you. At this point, Sigmund finally spoke sarcastically. It seems that people around you don't talk much. Because you said that you don't trust me, so I need to analyze and prove my value a bit. Dio said, How can you do this? Sigmund asked, to which Dio replied with a smile, I've thought it all through. I know how to erase all those dark alleys. After explaining his plan to Sigmund, all Sigmund could do was exclaim, This is a meticulous plan. I didn't think you were an impulsive person. Is this your first time in Libernas? I was a military doctor when I was young, so I've done my part of the investigation. I'm saying that I don't do bad things. Can you trust me this time? Sigmund fell silent. Talking to this cunning deal was truly depressing. Sigmund thought carefully, finding this guy too unusual, just based on rumors he could guess the antagonistic relationship between Sigmund and those dark alleys, even asserting that he could erase them. Remember that the underworld in the dark alleys has been a thorn in Sigmund's side for a long time that he couldn't do anything about. Then Sigmund decided to send someone to follow this suspicious deal. Deal wandered around the city. It seemed that life was still bustling as when he played the game. Nothing changed. Outside the streets were luxurious restaurants, bustling market stalls, but right behind them were the alleys full of crime. In the past, when he was still playing the game, Dio had cleared quests in this city, and the quest related to the dark alley was completed quite easily. There are two forces controlling the power of these dark alleys, or the underworld here. One is the Golden Down Gang, and the rest belongs to the Gorhal Gang. According to the plot, the Gorhal Gang had completed the occupation of all the dark alleys, but in the end, they were slaughtered by Sigmund's Night Corps in a rage over Sepia's death. But now that Sepia has escaped death, Sigmund no longer has a reason to rage against them. The plot will change a lot. The following plots will be blind spots for Dio. But the answer to this blind spot will be known to Dio right after. He stopped in front of a building. In the game, Golden Dawn was defeated by Gorhau because they suffered heavy losses at the hands of Sigmund. That's where the story is at this point. Dio opened the door and stepped in. A robust old man with white beard greeted Dio with a beaming smile. Ha ha. It's rare for the army to send a leader to apologize to us. Dio also smiled brightly and said to Rudin, Rest assured, we will no longer bother the alleys. Dio wasn't surprised by Rudin's reaction the head of the Golden Dawn gang. Even though he had suffered heavy losses from Sigmund's previous raids, he still greeted Dio warmly. Truly a rogue and a businessman. Then Dio left. Hope we will always be in harmony, of course. Be careful on your way back, Inspector. Stepping out of the door, Deal was quite satisfied. The first brick had been laid. Next, Deal went to the NPC warehouse, needing to prepare a bit. In a monster dungeon, Deal was diligently farming monsters to level up. The monsters in this dungeon were mainly giant sewer rats. Nothing was difficult for Deal, mainly needed perseverance. Each one a sword, instantly dead. The essence of fire that Deal had taken from his warehouse had met one of the skill evolution requirements but it didn't have any effect on the skill. Suddenly a rat rushed up, it intended to sneak attack, chit-chat. The rat holding a dagger continuously stabbed at a layer of Dio's defense. It was angry because it couldn't do anything, whoosh. A sword stroke carrying a fire charm. Boom. Bang. A group of rats died again. At this time behind Dio a priest in a blue robe spoke up, Dio. Are you okay? I'm fine, priest croupies. Oh, you're really strong. Your fire magic is even stronger than my holy shield. This blue-robed guy was named Krippies, a priest of the Luna Temple. Dio met him after doing a few quests to earn some money and experience in the city. After receiving a sewer-cleaning quest, Dio decided to do it with Krippies, 
Anyway, having an extra priest wouldn't hurt. Kropis was all smiles, continuously thanking Dio. Thanks to you, Dio. The church's investigation mission is going much smoother. Thank you so much. Don't say that. Rather thanks to you. I was able to deal with them more quickly. I think we've gone quite deep. Maybe we should stop here. What do you think? Yes, thank you very much. I don't think there are any rat people left. And so after a few polite words, the two parted ways. Krupis didn't forget to bless Dio, hoping that the Luna God would always illuminate Dio's path. But as soon as Dio walked away, he immediately put on a cunning smile. A suspicious person with high-level swordsmanship and explosive magic, I think we've found him, Your Excellency Archbishop, in a destitute alleyway. Hey, isn't that the vagabond from the other day? Indeed, it's him. His attire is unmistakable. Two thugs were discussing Dio, who nonchalantly continued to move forward. They labeled Dio as a spy for the Golden Dawn gang, as Dio had anticipated. Information spread like the wind in the underworld. A cocky thug stepped forward, his demeanor eager to pick a fight with Dio. He blurted out, Hey there, you seem pretty arrogant. You must be mistaken if you think we're as weak as those guys from Golden Dawn. He drew his knife and shouted to assert his dominance. We are the Gore Howl, got it? Dio looked at these guys putting on a show, but ultimately, Dio remembered he was still short of some experience points to reach level 90. He <laughs> he. Dio smiled kindly and said, I just want to meet your boss. If defeating you guys will speed things up, I'm willing to do that. The leader of the gang started to get angry, his face turning red. He cursed loudly, damn you, you vagabond. Brothers, get him. And so, the whole gang charged at him with their weapons. Dio looked at them, seeing nothing but thousands of experience points. Inside the shabby room, suddenly there were loud thuds outside the door. Bang. Then a gang member was thrown to the ground. Boss, save us. The leader of the Gorehow gang was a muscular woman with fiery red hair. She held a bottle of liquor in her hand, knowing that the person from Golden Dawn had arrived. Dio opened the door, wearing a devilishly kind smile. Oh, they've really led me to their boss. Are you the leader of the Gorhal? Dio asked. The thug who was thrown to the ground by Dio earlier. Thanks for leading me here. The female leader forced a smile, looked at Dio and said firmly, Are you the one Sigmund brought? I heard you went to Golden Dawn first. Why are you here when you've already chosen your side? Dio casually replied, Sigmund told me to clean up all the dark alleys. The female leader laughed out loud at this as if telling a child to go to the battlefield, it was absurd. Don't fool me. How could the arrogant Sigmund let an outsider like you handle the affairs of Libernas? Crash. The sound of the liquor bottle being smashed next to Dio as a warning. The female leader became angry and said, Even if that's true, are you here to declare war? No, what? The female leader was surprised. Not declaring war then what are you doing here? What do you mean? At this moment, Dio confidently said, Listen. Sigmund may have made a request of me, but I am not his puppet. Then Dio posed like a savior, spreading his arms wide and passionately declaring, I am here to unite all the dark alleys. Hearing this, the female leader felt like she was hearing something absurd, this man Anne. With a fiery temper, she immediately ordered her subordinates to attack, all of them brimming with hostility, eager to reduce Dio to a pile of bones. Enough talk, where are my men? Teach him a lesson. Dio stood still as the Gorhal henchmen charged recklessly. Even the archers in the back started shooting arrows. The arrow that shot towards Dio was caught by his hand. Dio looked at this formation and calculated. Three guys at a distance. No wizards. A total of twenty guys. The distance they charged was getting closer and closer. Dio began to step back into a defensive stance. One of the quick-footed guys jumped into the air, preparing to slash down. Dio was just as quick pulling out his magnificent sword from his inventory, the forgotten swordsman's skill, first form, slash. A burst of purple energy erupted, carrying a shocking force, all the henchmen had to raise their hands to block. In just one second, they were all pushed back. After this slash, Dio stood still, watching the astonished Gorhal, look at you guys. Hey, damn it, is he a magic swordsman? Don't get close to his sword, damn it, we can't fight back. Dio starts to counterattack. Whoosh. Dio rushes like the wind, gets in front of a guy. Bam. He hits the guy in the stomach with the hilt of his sword. The guy is thrown tens of meters away, dragging along his gang behind him. 
all bark and no bite? D turned to the big female leader and taunted, How long do you plan to just watch? The female leader stuck out her tongue. Her face darkened. Dio continued to provoke. If this situation continues, I'm sure I'll take down all your henchmen. At this point, she flew into a rage, her whole body emitting a fierce aura. She roared like a beast. Everyone get out of the way. I'll deal with this bastard myself. Then the female leader charged forward, one hand holding a shield, the other a battle axe, truly the fighting style of a viking. Clang! Dio's sword blocked the axe. Her brute force was overwhelming, pushing Dio back a bit. Seeing this, the female leader sneered, With just this little skill, you dare to show off here? Dio just silently stood his ground, looking at this woman. Although she didn't have high-level skills like Sigmund, she had overwhelming physical strength, even more than Dio. All right, Dio had made up his mind. Next, the female leader launched an attack, throwing Dio out, continuing to swing her axe up. This was the finishing blow. Come on. Let's end it here, boy. Dio could only raise his hand to block this sharp axe. Oh damn, something was wrong. Dio was still there, unscathed. How the hell could this guy use his bare hand to block an axe from a female tanker? The secret lies here. It's the level 100 gauntlet, a unique piece of equipment in the game. Not only that, this wealthy character is also wearing a full set of six items, boosting his strength by an additional 150 points. Clearly, he's the boss. The female leader, witnessing this scene, breaks into a sweat, feeling a bit desperate. Damn it, is that a legendary item? Of course it is. In the game, nothing captivates the players more than these legendary items. But items of unique rank or higher are all called legendary. Their value is immeasurable. But the nature of the female leader is such, she's stubborn and never admits defeat. You think you can beat me just by wearing legendary gear? She challenges, then charges straight at Dio, aiming to slam a shield into his face. This time, Dio counters with his own punch, his face confident. He replies, of course. The female leader feels genuine worry for this punch from Dio has a completely different level of power, a colossal force, like a punch from a giant, piercing through the shield, striking the female leader directly, causing her to spit blood. Then, there's no then, she faints on the spot. Dio stands there, smirking to himself. This female general is too confident and too subjective. What Dio is wearing is not just this gauntlet, but a full set of six items, enough to understand the power that a set of legendary artifact gear can bring. Foolish, too foolish, in front of good gear, level difference means nothing. Pop! The eyes of the female leader suddenly open wide, then she roars like a mad cow. Indeed, her recovery ability is very good. Dio raises both hands to block this shock wave. Her roar is like a lion's roar, emitting a terrifying divine power. Too scary. Dio can totally smell the danger when facing her in this state. Whoosh! The energy burst from the female leader tears through the wind. Dio quickly grabs the axe handle of the opponent with his hand, absolutely not letting her get the weapon, otherwise it will be extremely dangerous. Next, a judo throw. Boom! The female leader, like a dreaming buffalo, is thrown heavily onto the ground. She coughs once. Her right hand has stopped responding. Dio has knocked her out. All right, now take a rest. The underlings stare in disbelief at their leader's defeat at the hands of Dio. They can't believe it. But they dare not move because Dio is sitting on her stomach and holding a sharp knife in his hand. Damn you, son of a bitch. You'd better keep your mouth shut if you don't want your leader's life to be affected. So everyone is silent, waiting for their leader to wake up. Dio heaved a sigh of relief, finally completing 90% of the task. Dio thought perhaps he had grown significantly stronger, but upon reflection that wasn't the case. To be truly called powerful, Dio knew he had a long journey ahead. Suddenly, he remembered Raymond, his first friend in this strange game world. Surely, he must be doing well, right? In a secret dungeon, Raymond was being tortured nearly to death. His two teammates had been killed. Raymond, trembling, could only beg for mercy, while behind him, a darkly elegant girl was enjoying a cigarette. She stepped forward, a hunchback slave hastily greeted, Welcome, Lady Scarlet, Scarlet asked, Have you found anything? Scarlet's figure was so attractive that he drooled. He sincerely replied, Of course, my lady. After some persuasion, they confessed everything. 
They confessed all the events that happened until the monster wave attacked and Monty left on a carriage. Have you interrogated the coachman? On the way to Libernas, he suddenly asked the coachman to stop in the middle of the road, in the territory of the Paramount Plains. Scarlet looked at these people with contempt. These people talked about loyalty when they first came here. Is this all the loyalty they have? Believing in a weak concept like loyalty is the path to suffering. At this moment, a staff member came to find her and handed her a letter sent by a pigeon from Adara. The letter informed that they had found a suspicious person in Libernas with the characteristic of a swordsman using explosive magic. It could very well be the Monty they were looking for. Scarlet smiled satisfactorily. Whether the mercenary in Libernas was Monty or not, it was best to capture him first. She ordered, We go to Libernas immediately, clean up things here. Hearing this, Raymond widened his eyes. You said you would let me live. You said you would let me live if I confessed everything. Raymond screamed in despair. Tears once again overflowed. Ha! Huh. A dull sound echoed. Raymond was dead. At this moment, the female leader had regained consciousness. Why didn't you kill me when you had such a clear opportunity? Dio, with a gentle smile, replied, I told you, I came here to talk, not to annihilate Gorhal. Hearing this, her subordinates felt their hearts pounding. The female leader calmly asked, So, what do you want? Sigmund wants to unite two power groups into one. I don't like this idea at all, it's too complicated, and after the union, I have to stay to manage, don't I? So, why don't you unite the forces in these dark alleys? As soon as these words fell, the female leader was shocked. A drop of sweat trickled down. What? Dio continued calmly. I approached Golden Dawn first, but they have a leader who is not decent at all, smiling in front of you, but can stab you in the back whenever they have a chance. Dio pointed at the female leader and said, I like you. She felt a bit awkward hearing this. I told Sigmund, I will unite the two forces but you will be the one managing everything. What do you think? Whatever you like, just do it. It's entirely up to you. Seeing their boss negotiating with Dio, the wide-eyed subordinate remembered the past. Ten years ago, when he joined Gorhal, the alleys were not divided into forces. They were just places where criminals lived and interacted with each other. The first person to unite them used violence to dominate all. That was this female leader Tusk. She not only had violence but also had charisma and leadership skills. Under the belief that one day she would rule the alleys and overthrow Libernas, he swore allegiance to her. Dio kept talking non-stop. If you follow what I say, you will be the master of these alleys. How about that? Do you agree? Tusk naturally agreed immediately. Joy appeared on her face. The wide-eyed guy looked at Dio's face, a face of cunning and audacity. His boss trusted him, but he would never trust this guy. How could his boss trust such a strange outsider? Dio continued to elaborate on his plan. You must plant bombs at specific locations throughout the city, and let them detonate. Then, you should attack the Golden Dawn, as they will think you are under attack and will rush out. They are currently quite weak after Sigmund's sweeps. Tusk asked, Will the city's knights stop us when we fight the Golden Dawn? Of course not. In fact, they will even assist you. After this, you will be recognized for preventing the Golden Dawn terrorists and saving hundreds of city citizens. There will be rewards and recognition for you. From then on, you will become famous and become the manager of the alleys. Hearing this, the squint-eyed man felt something was wrong. Sigmund is a very strong person. How could he compromise with criminals? Just because he wanted to unify the alleys and Gore Howell accepted to play a plan of the enemy. His eyes were completely covered. Damn. This is a trap. Unexpectedly, the whole Gorhal gang only this squint-eyed man has a brain. He shouted, Boss, this plan is really ridiculous. Are we going to trust this bastard? Dio silently looked at him. Tusk gritted his teeth in anger. Shut up. He could have killed us all but he didn't. This is a golden opportunity. What are you thinking, you idiot? Go transport the explosives quickly. Tusk angrily ordered. The squint-eyed man could only silently obey. Damn. The boss completely trusts this bastard. He must think of something for his big sister. The night had fallen. Sepia softly asked, Who's there? Open the door. It turned out to be Dio. He came to check on Sepia. Sepia shyly said, When you left me, I felt a little feeling in my heart. It was a bit uncomfortable. This is not dangerous, right? Dio heard this and felt a bit guilty. Perhaps it will be okay if we don't go further apart. 
Ideally, Dio should keep the girl always by his side, so she will no longer be afraid. Dio could only reassure at this time. I think I'm about to finish the things I need to do here. You prepare your belongings, and your farewell to Sigmund. Hearing this, Sepia felt a bit reluctant, but she had to leave. Yes, I will do as you say. Of course, Dio understood. Leaving one's homeland and relatives for a journey that is not clear is a very depressing thing. Unfortunately, Dio is not good at comforting others. Dio put his hand on Sepia's head and gently said, Don't worry, we will think of a way to break the oath on the way we go. But before we go, I will show you a beautiful Liburna sky that you have definitely never seen. Dio smiled bitterly, really not good at comforting others. No wonder he didn't have a girlfriend before. Afterwards, he went to meet Sigmund. Let's start the conversation, Captain. Thank you for waiting while I spoke with your sister, you're very kind. But Sigmund, with an uncomfortable expression, replied heavily, Don't be arrogant. I won't hesitate to behead you if you act improperly. I've been observing you for a week now. Everything you've done has surprised me. You've stirred two underground forces, even unexpectedly registering as a mercenary before entering the sewer. What are you doing there, need money? Damn, this guy is really following me. Sigmund continued. I don't know about the rest, but waiting in the gore hall is a dangerous act. They are very active, ready to commit crimes against anyone. Damn, what if you die there? What will my sister do? Ah, so this guy is mainly worried about this. You don't need to worry. Everything is still going according to plan. What you need to do right now is to command your troops. The night sky was dark. The starry sky covered this pine forest. The two continued to talk under the moonlight, capture the gore howl while they think they are on our side, right? Dio clarified. But we need to give them time to battle with the golden dawn, so after an hour, wait for the signal to start the war with them. Sigmund realized the signal? What signal? Dio laughed loudly and joked, a signal like an explosion. What do you mean, isn't that putting the people in danger? Oh, you can rest assured, no civilians will be hurt, trust me. Four days later, the day of the great battle arrived. In these four days, all of Libernas was as peaceful as a lake, as if behind that shell, the criminals were sharpening their knives, preparing for a great battle. Tusk on this side had prepared his bombs, now just waiting. The catalyst will be activated and the bomb will explode at noon today, brothers, our era is coming. Opening the bottle of wine, Tusk and his men began to cheer. We are heading towards the same goal hoping that the unification of the alleys will be successful. It's not that Tusk hadn't thought about this before. It's just that Sigmund's cavalry was indeed tough. Unexpectedly an Easterner could solve this headache for her. Waiting for noon. Why is it so long? Just a few seconds of waiting feels like more than four days. At this moment, Tusk was waiting for the clock to strike. But for some reason, the fighting instinct of a Northerner like Tusk was trying to warn her of an impending danger. Tusk's eyes widened, damn it. She stood up abruptly, her face darkened with anger. The underlings didn't understand what was happening. Then she opened a barrel of explosives. What the hell is this? A time bomb. Only nine seconds left, stunned. Tusk still couldn't figure it out. There was a piece of paper from that bastard deal. It read, try the power of this explosive, boom. The bomb exploded, shaking the heavens and the earth. Then the church bell rang. All the places in the city where explosives were placed turned into fireworks shooting straight into the sky. The people were stunned by this sight. The children screamed in joy, so beautiful, beautiful to the point of stupefaction. All the people in the city temporarily stopped their work, standing silently watching the fireworks in the sky. Thousands, tens of thousands of fire flowers of various colors flying. Today is not a festival. Why are there fireworks? Does the Lord have this new hobby? Anyway, it's too beautiful, just enjoy it, in her room. Sepia looked out the window, tens of thousands of beautiful flowers of various colors shining in the sky. Oh my god, it's too beautiful. While Dio was just lying lazily on a branch, yawning. These Gorhal guys have worked really hard, it's just that they didn't get anything. Dio also didn't expect that they would design so many fireworks. These fireworks were also provided by Dio, a kind of reward during a previous game event. Each firework will shine continuously for 100 minutes. That's it, he will go to sleep for a while, wandering around setting up work all night, really made him tired and extremely sleepy. Looking at the sky, even though it's daytime, 
but the sun had to give way to the fireworks. It's indeed a splendid sky, worth investing in. The townsfolk were still engrossed in the spectacle, thinking it was a gift from the heavens. They quickly realized that a building was ablaze. Assuming it was caused by the fireworks, they ran to call the city's knights. As Dio closed his eyes to rest, he heard the system's notification of experience points gained. It was exhilarating. Tusk was dead. 71,000 experience points. Tusk's minions also contributed a fair amount of points to Dio. After the head of Tusk died, the minions didn't know what happened. They just followed the plan and attacked the Golden Dawn gang. So the entire city of Libernas echoed with the screams of fighting everywhere. All the alleys were bloodied. Gorhal's minions found Rudin, the leader of Golden Dawn. Even though Rudin was a strong warrior, he couldn't withstand a gang of thugs. He was stabbed through the chest, the system announced. You have completed the task of cleaning up the dark alley. Receive the reward of Libernas's Knight of Honor. Dio predicted correctly. Rudin couldn't hold on for an hour, and then, Sigmund's cavalry would flood in to clean up everything. Here it is, Sigmund was charging forward fiercely. Behind him were hundreds of fully armored knights. Dio chuckled at the sight. The opportunity had come. It was best for Dio to find Sepia now, and they would leave while Sigmund was fighting. Because things could change. They might change their minds if they meet again. Sepia was still mesmerized by the magnificent fireworks. The entire sky was beautifully stunning. Could this be the gift he mentioned? The maiden's soul trembled. Her heart pounded. She still had some doubts in her heart. Do I really have to leave this place? But suddenly a noise in the house startled her. The sound of heavy footsteps outside the door. Who's there? Sepia had locked the door. There's no way it could be open like that. She cautiously moved forward, but a large figure had appeared behind her without a sound. In the alleys, Sigmund's troops were reporting the completion of the task. Sigmund was pleased and praised his soldiers, thinking back, that bastard Dio was really not simple. The plan was exactly as he said, it was terrifying. Gorhal and Golden Dawn were annihilated due to the surprise attack. His knights just moved in to clean up the remnants, doing little but gaining a lot. Formidable. This guy was really formidable, so perhaps handing Sepia over to him might also be a choice. Sigmund ordered his subordinates to retrieve Rudin's body. As for the other dead bodies, they could clean up as they pleased. Suddenly, a soldier called out to Sigmund. The dead body of Rudin was emitting a strange purple smoke, a peculiar dark energy. What on earth is this? The energy seemed to be escaping from Rudin's mouth. Sigmund felt anxious. This was a sign of the hidden evil, impossible. Was Rudin this complicated? Whoosh. The sound of tearing wind echoed. The dark smoke was quickly escaping, heading straight towards Sepia's place. Sigmund shouted, Everyone, turn back. Protect Sepia. Dio had arrived first. Facing this situation, Sepia had fainted. In front of him was Rudin, the boss of Golden Dawn. How on earth was he here? Rudin greeted, Hello, Dio. Can we talk a bit? Dio pondered. He had played this scene in the game. Never heard of Rudin being able to survive after the purge of the knights. Specifically, this guy had united Gorhal through negotiation, not fighting, but after Sigmund woke up, he was completely annihilated. Could it be that this guy had a hidden background? It couldn't be. Dio shivered because the aura of this guy had changed, not like the last time Dio met, much more intense and profound. It turned out he was always acting. Dio smiled brightly, trying to confidently say, do you have a deal with me? Rudin made a hand gesture like an Italian nobleman, of course. With a snap of his fingers, the door behind Dio was immediately locked by his magic chain. No entry, no exit. At this moment, Dio knew nothing about Rudin's strength. Could he fight him? Moreover, he was holding Sepia hostage. Damn it, try first, think later. Dio blinked and threw a knife at Rudin, thud. The sound of the knife embedding in the middle of his forehead. Fresh blood gushed out like rain. Not yet, Dio jumped up, twisted his body, preparing a powerful horizontal slash. No, it was a stab, stabbing through Rudin's chest. The sword was pushed as hard as possible, piercing through the opponent's body. This attack speed was also too fast. Rudin was pushed down to the ground. But the system didn't announce anything. Dio knew that he couldn't be easily defeated. A hand quickly grabbed Sepia, pulling her towards him. Dio successfully rescued the hostage. Rudin calmly sat up. The wounds were healing at an extremely fast speed. He exclaimed, 
you made a precise decision to strike, even though you are young, you have become an experienced swordsman. I guess you have seen my secret, haven't you? Dio laughed. What? You mean you're a vampire? Yes, I knew you could answer. Of course, Dio knew that someone with a terrifying recovery ability like this could only be a vampire. Rudin stood up, crushed Dio's knife with his bare hand, and lamented, Anyway, you're not as I expected, is it because of your equipment? Or is it because all you can do is just that? Damn, more precisely, it's both of the above issues. Looking at his own sword, Dio had to compensate for his lack of skills with equipment. This destructive sword was also the best item that a level 60 could possess. Dio stood up, spoke rudely to Rudin, old man, in short, you want to give me new equipment, right? Rudin found it amusing. Haha, <laughs> you cheeky quick-witted kid. Dio pointed straight at Rudin's face and yelled, are you belittling me? You broke in and immediately kidnapped someone, and you're always judging me? What do you want? Rudin stood in place, laughing so hard his body shook. Interesting. But when he swung his hand, Dio knew he was making a move, fast as lightning. Rudin approached Dio, a deadly punch aimed straight at the face. Dio used all his strength to draw his sword to block. This punch was so strong that it distorted space. Retreating a few steps, Dio looked at this old man in horror. What kind of monster is this? He's too strong. The two fought. Dio could only defend and defend in hardship. Rudin generously praised. You resist quite well, but it's still not enough. Dio swung his sword hard to create a safe distance, but unexpectedly Rudin was too fast and approached once again. His claws were cold, sharp, and dark purple, clearly intending to take his life. Rudin roared, You've exposed the gap again, blink. A knife was thrown into the old man's eye thump. The knife hit the target. Dio successfully escaped death. It turned out that while Rudin was not paying attention, Dio used a candlestick to attack Rudin, catching him off guard. Dio grimaced and said, The cut is too shallow, isn't it? I intended to behead you. Now Rudin understood why Dio easily exposed the gap. This cunning kid wanted to lure him into attacking to counterattack unexpectedly. Rudin also had to praise. The plan is quite good, you can resist an enemy faster than you. Like before, Rudin's wound was healing quickly. Damn it, Dio could only grimace and stick out his tongue, even the silver candlestick was ineffective. It seemed that this guy belonged to a higher level of vampire. Suddenly, Rudin burst into delighted laughter. He said loudly, All right, you've passed. This made Dio completely confused. Dio asked in confusion, What are you doing? Do you know me? Of course I do. Rudin called out to Dio, Oh, forgotten swordsman. Dio was instantly stunned. Old man, what are you saying so suddenly? How do you know my identity? Rudin replied, Of course I know, that's all. At this time, Sepia was still unconscious, completely unaware of this conversation. Dio guessed that this old man was related to the hidden character class. Who are you? Dio asked anxiously. Rudin crossed his arms cheerfully replied, I am a vampire who has lived for thousands of years. During this time, I have survived as a gang leader. Ah, uh, this information made Dio feel chilly. The old man said so. Isn't he the vampire lord? Initially only guessed he belonged to the high-end vampire segment. Unexpectedly, he is the strongest vampire. That means he's around level 350. If he's serious, then Dio also needs to be ready to talk, Dio asked. Is your clan hidden in this city? Understanding Dio's intention, Rudin gently reassured, You rest assured, I am the only vampire in this city. Oh really? Rudin fell silent. Then he said, This land lost a piece of history thousands of years ago. Perhaps you have seen it on the paintings on the wall and found the power, haven't you? Honorable forgotten swordsman. At this time, the system announced, The character class mission was activated. Meet someone who understands the forgotten past. If Dio successfully explores this knowledge, he will gain new strength. The reward is to upgrade the character class by one level. Dio immediately understood, needed to take advantage of this opportunity to complete the mission. From there explore the context of the Forgotten Swordsman. Please, I want to know more about the history of this power Dio sincerely told Rudin. At this time, Rudin began to adjust his voice, deeply narrating, thousands of years ago, when this place was still the era of the gods. This era only had the god Luna known and protected humans, but then, there were countless gods to teach humans. 
There were also super entities stronger than Luna. That entity is our god, the sun god, that is also the symbol on Rudin's arm, a symbol like the third eye. Dio saw it, felt familiar, it was the symbol on the helmets of the warriors and the illusion that Dio had previously experienced. Dio also heard that there used to be countless churches, but later only the Church of Luna existed. The question raised is, those gods stronger than Luna, why can't they exist until now? Dio asked Rudin, what is the name of the sun god? Faced with this question, Rudin felt embarrassed. We can't just call his name out like that. We are under the rule of Luna. The following words gave Dio goosebumps. If they discover that we are trying to restore the light of the sun god, I can't imagine what terrible things will happen. You also carry the power of the sun, so I advise you to be careful. Dio was shocked. He didn't expect things to turn out like this. Can't you explain a bit more clearly? Oh my, do I have to explain more clearly to you? Did you see the paintings on the wall in the Forgotten Temple? In the Holy Era, when the Demon Lord attacked this world, the Sun God and the Moon God joined forces to protect mankind. Luna coveted the power of the Sun God, and in the end, they erased the history of the Sun God from this world. Dio understood. In short, Luna had betrayed the Sun God. Rudin continued, In an unceasing effort to erase the traces of the Sun God, Luna stands behind and continuously directs the Holy Order to prevent and destroy everything, aiming to make the Sun God a completely forgotten entity. If that's true, then how did you a Sun Worshipper survive? I know how to avoid Luna's gaze. But unfortunately, all the children who inherited the power of the Sun were cursed. Those wild children ruthlessly attacked mankind, and they joined hands with the Demon King. They want to turn the children of the Sun God into either human nor demon. Rudin bitterly recounted, this made Dio also shudder. So Delia Dark is also a child of the sun god, shining like a flower of light. No wonder the power that Dio inherited is the power of the sun. Rudin looked at Dio happily and said, you finally understand, right? Not only you, but that girl also uses the power of the sun. Dio remembered when Sepia went mad, he just thought it was a kind of high-level magic. He didn't expect it also originated from the sun. Rudin scratched his head awkwardly and said that's also why I came to Libernas. But while I was away for a bit, I didn't expect the little girl to be kidnapped hee hee. But maybe this is the plan of the sun god, thanks to that I met you. After this story, Dio understood the path he had to take in the future. But could all these coincidences and encounters also be arranged by the sun god? The fireworks still lit up the entire sky without stopping. Scarlet stood in the darkness, feeling the noise was too much. The priest beside her whispered, This is also the first time I've seen Libanas like this. Be careful to record this in the report. Where is Dio? The other replied, The last time we observed, we saw him with Sigmund of the city's Night Alliance. How did they meet? Scarlet said, I haven't investigated there yet. It's too secure. Scarlet knew that this city's night team had more influence than even the Lunar Church. I heard the leader is Sigmund, an excellent person. Indeed, Lady Scarlet, he is a knight who strives for honor and justice. But in Scarlet's eyes, honor and justice are just a game. Her hobby is to destroy other people's faith. And when she heard about Sigmund, Scarlet suddenly felt joy as if she had found a new toy. She stood up and ordered, Get ready. On this side, Sigmund was running like mad, running faster than a horse. He wanted to get to his sister as quickly as possible. But he didn't know a beautiful three-headed female demon was approaching and stalking him. End of part one.